Yay! More wins than losses. Yep, I see four and two on CM, five and two on CM. I see two and one on Shadow Shaman, and then how, what, what's today's That's date? It. Today's the fifth. Uh, Jakiro was my first game. I tried okay, Jakiro for Jakiro the first time. Jakiro was the first game. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh my God. Oh my god, Coach B. The difference, sir. The difference, man. I mean, it's amazing how... Because what we tackled last week was like, airy. I mean, just don't be a useless piece of shit in lane. Yeah. And you know, you know, so, you know, so funny. It's just... It's so funny how it's like very basic, but it did help guide me in regards to um, just handling myself early game. I just didn't want to be a nuisance to my carry. And yeah. it's it's just it was really funny how that basic thing just helped me guide and you also helped me with item decisions and everything. Banana slam giant. Um by the way, Coach B, you're the one who suggested Crystal Maiden. You're like, you should go Crystal Maiden. I'm like, why Crystal Maiden? Her movement speed, she's squishy. But dude, sir. Crystal Maiden's amazing. Dude, Crystal Maiden's super fun. She was one of the first supports I told I told people last week. She was one of the first supports I played when I was kind of like yeah. trying to expand my understanding of Dota by playing other roles. And uh, I, I, like I said, she has something to do when your team's not doing anything. She can jungle. She can clear waves. She actually does stuff with items. You know, you you can like kind of yeah. kill people. You you can scale yes. in the late game. So I, I enjoy playing CM. She's super fun. She is super fun. Um, she's, she she does pretty much everything. Her level three. Um, at first I didn't max her three first, but eventually I just started maxing three all the time. Okay. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, it's so funny how well you explained the core concepts of itemization and everything. Um, there was a time where I I think it was first pick Monkey King, and then I had Jakiro, so I bought Buckler because he's only one armor. Yeah. So those type of decisions I'm kind of making. But with Crystal Maiden, I always just um, buy um, I buy Windlace, uh, two Tangos, um, two Clarities, and two, two uh, uh, one Mangoes. Mango. Okay. That's basically because I noticed that I might have a higher chances of dying if I don't have that movement speed with CM. So I'm just like, because I don't think I'm that efficient yet with moving around early lane so i'm just i just get a wind lace all the time because i'm just like listen if you get a headdress I, i'm just gonna be moving so slow in the back and they're probably just gonna jump on me maybe eventually i'll know how to move it around but um yeah wind lace has been helpful and coach b pushing lanes the dead lane oh my god y you know what was so helpful for me like chat also was so helpful for me is I was just watching our video, right, last week. And what, what I realized was super helpful in terms of kind of just kind of letting it be instinctual was after I played for like a decent amount of time, I would revisit our video again. And I found that I would, I found that I would get certain things way, way better when I watched it again. And there were certain things that I missed or didn't quite sink in when I watched it again. Like one thing that was so, so good that we I didn't review with you last week, you said, okay, if you're gonna push, cause before I used to think like, I need to go and fight them. Yeah. Like I need to go in the map and fight them and kill them. That's yeah. what I need to do. A lot of people think um, that way. And I'm just like, we gotta find a fight and just try to kill, maybe we should smoke. And one of the best things that kind of just calmed me down and got me to this really nice direction in terms of how the game plays out was you said, okay, if you go for the dead lane, which is let's say if you're dire, you go, you go their safe lane, right? And you go mid lane, um, where do you, just focus on that, but where do you think that's gonna, the fight's gonna happen? And you're just, and I'm like, well, probably around Bottom lane, and, yes, exactly. Bottom lane and mid lane. So your fight is gonna happen wherever you're gonna try to hit your objectives. Yeah. And my last game, that on, I I went rank solo queue. My last one, that was my rank solo queue game. And um, Coach B, I was directing my team. I was just like, come on, guys, let's go bottom, because I knew that they had an alk. We were losing in the beginning, and we made a comeback because we had a better late game because we had alk and. Uh, 
Alk and uh, another hero. I forgot. Uh, but they had good late. We had good late game. But I noticed we weren't getting the bottom tower. We weren't getting the dead lane. And I'm just, come on, guys, let's go here. And we went there, coach. And yeah. some of them just tried to follow and contest our objective. And we totally won that fight. They even got Roshan when we were going for that bottom tower. They got Roshan. We weren't able to contest. But when they went there, we had that fight there. We won that fight. And since then, we just snowballed and won that game. We made a comeback. We made a comeback. I was just like, I directed my team to head over to the dead lane. Yeah. And we started winning. So I'm just saying, Coach V, it's a big difference, man. I, I think it's like a 60%, 60 or a slightly higher 60% win rate. And these things have been extremely helpful. Just pushing lanes, and I always push lanes. You're going to see yeah. me push lanes. I'm ready. Too. I'm ready to... Because like the first step is getting you to do that, right? The second step is yeah. like more in-depth about... Like what you're doing with your pushing of the lane, like your itemization, yes. all that kind of like all the efficiency stuff is what we can get to next. So I think the one thing I've been trying to emphasize to excuse me, anyone I've coached, but also through this series is that a lot of these advanced concepts can be applied at like a super basic level. If I just tell you these two lanes are really important and you focus on them, it's going to make the game much more straightforward for you it's not that i'm exactly. trying to hammer some advanced concepts into your mind but if you're like every time you don't know what to do or the game's feeling a bit weird if i can give you this like this is what you're supposed to be thinking about then um a lot of things will just become uh they'll almost explain themselves when you're in a, when you're in a weird spot and as a support you can have a lot of impact. And the funny thing about this is there's players in my games who are like rank 800 immortals and they yeah. don't do this shit right. Like that's the funny no, thing about this. You're is kidding, bro. I'm, I'm not shitting you. Like, uh, so an example of this would be that when I tell you that you're supposed to be playing around mid and bottom when you're dire, <clears throat> the opponent team's supposed to be playing around top and mid. So yes. if the opponent team's taking your towers, a lot of times as a core, it's too dangerous for me to play top if I'm on dire, usually. And there's a yes. lot of games where if I play there, I'm, I'm farming, but I'm likely going to die. So the yes. next step for you is that there's certain games where I, as a core, don't want to play my top half of the map. And if you're a support, like Jakiro with Macro Pyre, like Crystal Maiden with her long-range nuke, if you can clear those waves for me, you make it so the opponent's delayed when they're trying to take objectives... And you're taking the dangerous farm so that I can take the safe farm. And that's a concept that supports in my bracket, even like the 700, 800 mortal players, they don't comprehend yeah. at all. So like when I tell really? you the right parts of the map to play, right now you're kind of learning, okay, this is where my team's supposed to play. And if they're not playing there, I'll just go there. But the next step that's is, what I did. yeah, once you get to like maybe... 3k 4k ish like if we can get yeah. you there obviously it, it just based on sheer volume of games it probably won't happen by the end of of this five weeks but as you're climbing then the next step will be you know maybe i should not play there because my teammates are already there they're already doing this now what else can i do um so um but the cool thing is if you're playing like this and you kind of know what you're looking for if your team's not doing this you do it like you said you're gonna do and if your team maybe yeah. is doing it, maybe just by chance, like they don't really know, but they, they are doing yeah. it, we can start talking about what your other options are, things to think about on top of that. And uh, I love it. It'll be that, that, that'll, I'll, I'll basically see what you're doing here and proceed to, to, you know, edit accordingly. So, did you have uh, two of these, like one or two of these games that you thought were yes. particularly good to learn from here? Definitely, because my third to the last game, that wasn't a good one because I was playing too aggressive and I was feeding like most of the time. Um, but that's when after that third game, this is when I'm like, all right, I'm going to play not to die. I'm going to really just try to do objectives and play tight. I wanted to play tight. I was playing really loose on the third. But the second to the last, I think, is a really good one because we got objectives, but we lost. Okay. We uh got our objectives. But we lost, and I think it's because they, um, item decisions, I think, on our end was the reason that we possibly lost. We were doing well up to a certain point, and then they just scaled really, really good. Um, but um, yeah, I would say this was a good one to learn one, and my last game, because that's just me solo queuing. 
Okay. I was just that was totally like I had Guardian and Herald teammates and I was just solo queuing. But this is when I was directing them and saying, hey, let's go here. Let's go here. I wasn't even explaining why. Like you said, come on, guys, let's push bot. And they're like, G. I'm just like, all right, G mm -hmm. is what I want to hear. <laughs> and we go bottom Yeah, lane. don't try to explain. I, I will emphasize I that try. again. Yeah. I didn't try. Come on, guys, let's go here. I was just, that's all I said. And that sometimes I would smoke and initiate a smoke because I saw that the bottom lane at the deadline was still kind of up there. I'm just like, so I just initiated the smoke. And we got a pick off, and then we got that kill. So I'm just like, this works. I'm just gonna just do it. I'm just gonna do this. Okay. So, Real quick question dude, it, before it's, we start. It's a big difference. Yeah, um, go on, sir. I'm sharing my screen on my other screen with you. Is it enough for you to see the Dota window on that stream? Because otherwise, I can't stream my cam to you anymore. Is this Dota window you're seeing for my stream? Is that good enough yeah. for you to to work with? Yes, this yes, one, sir. This yes, one right yes, here? very much. Yes, okay. Sir. Actually, if I met. If I maximize it, it's even bigger. Okay. And I'm seeing Twitch. I'm I'm seeing Twitch chat on the right as well. Hello, Twitch chat. Hello. Cool. Okay. So okay. I will say, like, I don't expect you to fully understand this kind of stuff, but their late game definitely is better than yours with uh, yes. Terrorblade. Very greedy lineup. So it would make sense to me I if you guys. Go ahead. I I juke the shit out of this Terrorblade coach. Okay, I'm, ready. I'm, ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for the highlights. No. I'm ready for the Papega plays. I'm ready for. I'm ready it for it all. It was my first juke. I juked him, and he was like, "Oh, Don't I'm, spoil I was like, too the... much, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, like, you gotta let me be like, wow, you know, the juke." Oh, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. That was that was a little mid mid part, but I, I clipped it last night because it was my first ever juke. And look, look at me. I freaking spent the Dota Plus um a set on on Crystal Maiden. That's how much I loved her. There I spent seventy five thousand Dota two points on, uh, and that was a hard <laughs> thing. Okay, so something that, to talk about real quick. Do you know I how Frostbite works on creeps? Yes. Okay. It works one thousand damage. I made the mistake because chat was telling me, "Listen, you're gonna win this lane if you just frost Frostbite the boars." And before I they, I heard that. Um, I didn't realize that um, it works the same way with Beastmasters familiars. So I was just like, I just went my usual Nova. But yeah. when I went, when I went Frostbite, I just, I just Frostbite it. I just Frostbit them and they just died just like, oh, like, you're dead. Okay, so, so real quick, I will emphasize, I emphasize this to a lot of people. I actually had two relatively low MMR people sign up last week and both of them instantly skilled their ability at the start. Like... They got out of Fountain, and they instantly skilled. So, on a lot of yeah. heroes, especially Crystal Maiden, there's just some games, like, you're going to go Crystal Nova most of the time. But then there's some yeah. games where you're going to go Frostbite, right? And so, yes. even if you're a hero that 100% skills something, it's really good to get in this habit to wait. Because sometimes right. you'll run into a rune fight where... You're, you like now that you think about frostbite this way, and maybe you weren't thinking about it at the very start, but then you see a summon at the at the rune, you'll be like, oh, I can frostbite that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then you summon, you use your frostbite. So usually, for me, I try to get in the habit of waiting to level my skill until I'm actually using it. Um, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So try to get in the habit. It'll help you a lot. Just random moments like this. Obviously, if you don't know the interactions, it's like you know that's how you learn that's that's what i meant by you know you'll kind of just trial and error a bunch of random crap when you're yes. playing these heroes um yes. so yeah nice thing to know about crystal maiden i'm sure you won't have to learn that lesson twice that's at least the you know the goal yeah it it, it was so funny twitch chats was like i tell you you're gonna win this lane just go frostbite i'm like <laughs> nova and they're like no why did you nova i'm just like i didn't know but yeah, yeah. yeah um I played fairly tight here. This is where me, I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna play tight. I was playing really loose, and I was just trying. Like, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do what I need to do. Um, and this is me trying to play as tight as possible. Okay, so okay, I'm gonna pause real quick and talk to you. So, do you know how to uh, put items in your quick buy? Um, I think you press shelf shift right click shift left click right shift or uh control left click wait why won't control it, okay why won't it shift wait, why won't it can i not do it if i'm on player perspective let me figure this out sorry one second this is so funny that i was about to tell you how to do it and then i'm yeah. so muscle memory based i don't even know the name of the hockey to to do it so once... I, I think it's shift it's shift i have to i have to actually get out of this 
I have to actually get out of this. I, I believe you're right. It is shift. Let me just confirm because yeah. I'm crazy. Like this is actually nuts to me because I'm like, okay, I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna go into a game and, <laughs> and click a button and I know it'll work. <laughs> yeah, it is shift. Uh, yeah, it is shift. And it's just shift. so it's everyone shift. knows, yeah. you can also control shift and add multiple items. Mm, no. Yeah, so you can do like, say you're in lane and you wanted like stick, and you also wanted boots. You can do that. So control shift. I did it. The that next I one. did it. No. Yeah. So that's a nice little tip. I figured at least that part would help you. Um, yes. So now that I see like you're gonna start, my goal is when I tell people to pick new heroes. So in your case, we obviously only watched like a minute of this game so far. Um, yes. Where are we? Where are you? And you know what, coach? Just to add, like coach B, what what's I added? The limit in hero pool has been so helpful. I, just like I hope so. Go ahead. Because I remember I would just try different ones. Oh, Pugna is in the meta right now. Things in the meta, I should try them. But it's also just figuring out how your hero will work in different situations and matchups. You don't Absolutely. get to do that. You don't. You don't get to do that when you're um when you're just trying different heroes. And it's like you said, it's distractions. You're just like. You're not even figuring out how to play this game with one hero well with all of the different situations you're going to get into. You're not going to get there if you pick so many different heroes in the beginning. Okay, so let me tell you right now, at my bracket, so obviously my goal, a lot of players like me got to high MMR mm. playing like three or four heroes. A lot of us did that, right? Because we had our signature heroes, we realized we were way better at these than others, and eventually it became a crutch. And it took me a really long mm. time to realize that First off, it helps you understand the game better the more you expand your hero pool because every hero requires yeah. unique skills. But it also, yes. you don't learn a new hero unless you just play it like a large Crazy. concentration in a small amount yeah. of time, right? I realized I had played like 50 games of some heroes and didn't learn jack shit. Like, there were 50 games over the course of like two or three years and I just didn't learn mm. anything. And then I realized like, like, for instance, in January, I took uh, Enchantress. I'd never really played yeah. Enchantress before. After, like, 15 games of her in a row, I was like, wow. I understand what this hero does in the game. Like, I, I get, in general, a lot of her matchups, the way her lane plays, yeah. and, like, what I'm supposed to do in team fights and all that kind of stuff, just by playing her 15 times in a row. And so, like, when people ask me about spamming, I know that's going to be a topic that a lot of new players or even experienced players will ask. If you're trying to learn the game... There's a lot of stuff, like the concepts I'm telling you about, if you're also trying to learn that, if you're also trying to learn, play like 10 different heroes and apply these concepts to the heroes, Not gonna happen. you're just going to shit your pants, right? Like you're just going to be like, Ugh. Exactly. and so for you, what I think playing like a small amount of heroes, maybe like five games in a row of each like you're doing, it allows you not only to learn the hero you're playing, but it also allows you to analyze these concepts that I'm telling you about, like the lane pushing and the laning and the items in a way that is unique to that hero. Like, you're learning to analyze it, though. Like, you're learning to be like, oh, this game, I should have done this. This game, I should have done that. And then what happens is, if you can learn how to analyze, if you can learn, hey, this is how I came to the right conclusions on Crystal Maiden, it actually yes. becomes easier and easier on the next hero. To like, understand those concepts. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. instead of 10 games on Crystal Maiden, it'll take you 8 on Shaman. You know, I'm just saying, like, it'll, it'll take less and less time to get a general idea of how to play these heroes. And honestly, I'm going to tell you with brutal honesty to myself, I did not learn yeah. this until last year. And I've been playing Dota for seven or eight years. So you're, you're kidding. This is an idea. Like when I talk about learning new heroes and like learning new concepts, I didn't truly understand how to hone that learning process as quickly as possible until the last year, like last 12 months or so. That's how like I can just tell you, it is something that if you don't, if you aren't handed the keys to the car, it is like really hard. Like you just, like there's no cheat code to this. There's no like system in place. Can that I ask helps you? People. Can Go I ahead. ask a question, Coach? Yeah. Um, what were the things that eventually guided you towards that? Like, what did you see? How was it affect? I mean, at your level, how was it affecting you in a way you're just like, oh my god, this doesn't work. Like, what were the things that were happening to you? Were just like. So a lot this of a lot of people in my bracket, a lot of it is literally just watching other players, right? So it's like I'll yeah. see like you even if you ever watched our TZ stream, there were times where he'd just play like jug twenty five games in a row. And for me and a lot wow. of other viewers, it's like, why the hell is he playing juggernaut twenty five games in a row? Who gives a rat's ass at the twentieth game? You know, hasn't he learned yeah. enough? And a lot of it was me seeing these habits that players were doing. 
And for the longest mm. time, not really understanding why. Mm. And to be honest with you, the biggest difference that was for me was realizing I'm clearly missing something. I'm going to act like I know absolutely nothing. I'm going to watch what these players are doing players yeah. are doing and try to reverse engineer it and ask myself why like why do they feel like they have to do that to learn and mm, that was like i think one. me having more of an open mind is the only reason that it's actually come to my attention as being important like that's the main difference um so I, humility got you humility it really did. Got like, you. for a long time yeah. it's really easy to be like a high-ranked pub player and just be like i got myself here like yeah I'm, I must be I'm doing good. it right, you know, like, I, yeah. got, I got this pie, and eventually, like, yeah, a lot of it is, like, you watch other players, you see what they're doing, but then you think, how does this apply to me? You know, not everyone learns the same way, not everyone... And you're a top 100 Immortal player, and yeah, that's, like, when you, you're thank saying you. that. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, top, no, top just, 50, I wasn't I'm, sure, I wanted, I didn't, I wasn't sure, I didn't, I didn't get the number, yeah. but you're, 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 in that, you're in that top, and you have that mentality. That's a, that's it's, a really It's really big hard thing. to come to, and it's like, you just have to eventually admit, like, Dota, you never stop knowing. Somebody in chat the other day asked me, you know, BSJ, do you know everything about Dota? And I said, if anybody in the world tells you yes, admit them to a psych ward, because they are completely delusional. They they just don't. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work that oh, way. That's the beauty that's, about that's Dota. The, that, yeah, that's the day someone takes over them. You're just yeah. like, oh, I know everything. That's 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 the day someone who's like, I don't know everything is going to take over that guy who thinks he knows everything. Absolutely. So the, the funny thing is we got on a huge, you know, bunny trail there or whatever. Rabbit hole. It's went down fine. Rabbit hole. But, it's fine. It was a good conversation. Yeah, absolutely. But so just making sure I don't miss my initial point. When I go into a lane and I see my lane yeah. matchups, I immediately put whatever items I think I'll need in quick buy. So if I'm a carry, okay. it's like Wraith Bands or, you know, Boots or Glove of Haste or something. As a support, it's items like Stick, it's items like Windlace, Boots, you know, maybe yeah. a Sentry if you think they warded your camp or something. You know, I'm just saying, I put these items in my Quick Buy because even at my level, if I don't do this, I will sometimes forget to buy an item. Like... Meaning, if I want to buy a stick, I'll wait till I have 350 gold to buy that stick, rather than buying it at 200. Go ahead. Uh, that, that's so funny. That happened to me just a few times ago. I forgot to buy boots. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, like, I, I forgot to buy boots. Yeah. So this is a habit I try to tell everyone to get into, is not only does it make sure you buy the item, but it's also forcing you to think critically about what item you're going to buy. Like, it's like mm. a lot of the games where I'm playing New Heroes, I'm like so overwhelmed that I find myself just autopiloting items because I suddenly have 900 gold and I'm like, well, I guess I just buy this and this. And then like, I'll look back yeah. on the game and be like, wow, I really should have bought this. And it's like the mm -hmm. heroes that I'm really comfortable on, I know exactly like these are the sort, these are the series of items I'm going to want in this exact game, queue them up in the quick buy, buy them the second I get them. It's like, you know, that's the difference between extreme comfort on a hero and like, yeah, you know, new to a hero. So if you're new to a hero, the best practice you can try to get into is putting it on your, your quick buy. buy. And even if it's not the perfect item, it's a great habit because eventually you will be like, yeah, every time I'm going through this thought process, now that I'm comfortable on this hero, I'm going to put the right item in that quick buy. But we gotta yeah. make sure it goes there first. So like, my question for you would be against Bat Beastmaster, what would your first gold be spent on? Just out of curiosity. Bat Beastmaster, cause they were freaking going at me, man. So Bat Beastmaster, I would say, uh, can you give me three items? Like, uh, let's say, out of these three, it's one of those. So uh, I'm guessing sure. for me. Uh, I'll for say, me, go ahead. Go okay. No, go ahead. I would say from those guys, based on my experience with them, where they were just freaking getting me, I needed a lot of mana. I needed a lot of regen. And I definitely needed survivability because they were always going at me. Okay. So I, I would say... Um, Stick clarities and tangos or a south just to make sure that I keep um or and boots of course because they kept going at me. So I think those four. Okay, so absolutely. I think your first two hundred gold immediately should be spent on stick. Because yeah. bat rider sticky napalm, like you just get so many charges. Um bat bristle back, you get like a bajillion charges. Shadow demons if they're using their poison or whatever. There's a lot of heroes that just spam shit. Like sticky napalm, three second cooldown. So you're gonna get you're right. A bajillion from that so then the next step the way i think about your items you the, all the items you listed were correct by the way 
But the way I look mm. at it is I need the stick right away. So first 200 gold is a stick. And then the next yeah. ideal item would be boots, right? Because you said they're running at me yes. a lot. They have the boar yes. that slows you, the sticky napalm that slows you. But 500 gold's a lot. So maybe along the way, I might have to buy some more clarities or a salve or, you know, some other, like a mango or two. You know, maybe I'll have to do something on the way to that 500 gold. So yes. when you're thinking about your items, you can go for that quick stick and then be like, okay, I know I want boots. And if I ever get a sudden influx of gold, maybe I killed somebody or whatever. Yeah. I'm buying boots. But in the meantime, this is the stuff you pay attention to. Every lane matchup you're in, like, oh, like, I'm 460 gold. I don't have boots yet. And I have 100 health. Like, I wish I had a salve. Yeah. You know? And it's yeah. like, maybe you were supposed to buy a salve before you beginning. saved up for the boots, right? So it's like, those are the things where I like to think, what are my ideal items? Like, what am I trying to get to? Yes. And then what I might need along the way. You know, do I need extra regen? Do what do I you know what I mean? You know what's so funny, Coach B? What yeah. I realized from that as well. If I learned that I that that concept that you said, if you don't have regen, but you have you know, you have these items that you needed, if you don't have your regen first and you don't prioritize it, you end up just moving at a very far place because you know that especially if they go at you, you yeah. know? If they always go at you, I'm just like, oh man, I have the item I needed, but I'm so low health, I can't maximize this item that I just got. Oh, absolutely. Maybe I, maybe I should have had regen first and then, you know, eventually went to that. But what I've learned as well is when you have regen and they commit to you, you survive that much longer for your team to be able to come and kill them. Yeah. And, and that happened with Batrider. I was, he, she, she, he was chasing me all the way to like tier two. And it was enough time for me to say, guys, they're killing me, come on, or something like that. And these other guys went and we got that kill from Bat. But this Bat was freaking, he was angry, man. He, she, he did not like me. Batrider is a like, ham hero. I don't know if you know that, but that hero oh, is full divide mode. I think this is the first time I went against a. Uh, Bat Rider as well. He is not like, a low MMR in... hero. I will say that I I didn't know who Bat Rider was until I was like the equivalent of probably three or four K. I didn't even know that hero existed. Yeah, and the they funny were thing high. was they were back high. then, TI three Bat Rider was yeah. the most broken shit in all of Dota. Really? Like, that hero, really? that hero was beyond busted at that point. If you look at the patch notes from like TI three to TI seven, it's like. Yeah, forty nerfs in a row. <laughs> like seriously, so nerf, 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 nerf. nerf. It's, yeah, it's, it's really funny. I think the first patch he received buffs was like last year or something. It was pretty funny. But he was he was tough. He was tough. Yeah, to but all against. I'm just laughing about is you saying you know I didn't know Batrider is a hero. I never see him. But that's the point is you know we can talk about small matchups and then uh, okay so you're going over to pull so we can talk about small matchups and if it's the first time yes. you've seen a hero you'll learn something. Um, so and he's he's he doesn't he, he doesn't want me to pull. I'm just like, okay, this guy's playing better than the usual guys because usually other guys lets me pull, and I'm just like, oh, that's probably a little bit better than most. So my question would be, do you think you trying to pull is a mistake here? I actually don't no, know what I, I did there. Why is wait, it good or um, bad what you're like you trying to pull and him just stopping you? Um, uh, why is it good or bad him trying to pull and me just stopping you? Well, I think the good thing is, one, it was the right decision to pull because the creeps were a little bit forward, so I was trying to get them back. Is that, that was another my reason why it might be right to pull right now? Like, you're right about that. I, I would think that because Batrider is going to me, he's not going to get harassed. Uh, he's not going to get to harass my carry, so I'm getting him away from that lane so that my carry will have a slightly easier time getting creeps. Absolutely. That is 100% a reason why it is good. Is there a reason why your hero would rather pull right now than lane? Um, I think it's also because these two have bursts. They can just go at me. So if I'm there most of the time, maybe they could just jump at me and take advantage of my squishy situation. Okay, absolutely. That's one. You have no mana as well. Oh, that's exactly. I have so, no mana. Uh, oh, all there the it reasons is. you mentioned are actually all right. So let's just be very nice. clear about that. But the way nice. I want you to think as a support player is... If you go pull here and Batrider does not contest, you're going to get the pull. Great, right? If he does contest, you effectively removed yourself and the Batrider from the lane. Mm. And I would ask you right now, is that good if you and Bat are both removed from this lane based on your health and yes. mana situation, based on your heroes? Would you yes. prefer to fight them 2v2 or allow your jug to be 1v1, right? 
Hell so, no, hell no. Because right? my, my, my hero, Crystal Maiden, is so much squishier than Batrider and ha has less movement speed. So what's going to happen if I'm about to die? If they kill me, they get stronger, one. Two, yeah. Jug trying to save me Absolutely. is going to get him away from farming. So even him trying to f save me is like a few seconds out of him focused on getting creeps. And I don't want that for him, basically. Yeah. Um, so to be clear to everyone in chat, because I see some comments, it the the answers you're giving me are actually all right. It's just usually I'm trying to go for a specific answer, and mm -hmm. if I hear your thought, it's like still good to hear what you're thinking. My overall answer was you yourself have like half health and no mana, so I'd rather yes. be out of lane. But okay. lane pushing and everything you else you said are all relevant to the scenario. But for me as a okay. support, it's like, I'm, I look at my health and mana and I'm like, I don't want to be in lane right now. I don't do anything. Yeah. Like you said, okay, I don't want to be a useless yeah. piece of shit, right? So yes. I yes. like if I'm being a useless piece of shit, I walk over and go pull. That's like a great uh, way to not be useless. So you pull him across, he can test you, you back off, great. Yes. This is the moment you should and have I that stick right there. Did I buy it? Oh, no, I didn't. I was, I think, focused on just like, oh, this bat is so freaking annoying with his black ink that he's like spitting at me. So my question would be, if he stopped you the first time, why not just do it again? If he stopped me the first time, in so, terms of pulling? Yeah, so I told you that it was better to pull at 115 than it is at 145, but that doesn't mean you could never pull at 145. So, what I'm saying is, since you tried to pull at 115, why not just try again at 145? Um, I think I was kind of in that mentality of, uh, it's best to pull at 114 as much as okay. possible. So, the goal here now is to learn, okay, yes, try to pull at 114, that's the dream. Yeah. But once players, somehow, in your 1k bracket, you had a Batrider 4 position that was actually contesting your pull. Okay, that's like... You know, that he's, was a step up from last time that we that we played. Uh, or last time we do a coaching session. So I always like to think this is the way I would play the lane ideally, but these are other options, right? So pulling at 145 okay. is still an option. It's just not as good. So unless the opponent's stopping me, I'm going to do it at 115, right? That's the, how I prefer to think about this. And so all I'm saying is it would have been great to just try again because you can't walk up in lane, right? You have no mana. No, So. No. It's still the same scenario it was 30 seconds ago. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. a lot of people would say, BSA, why doesn't he stack right here instead of pull? Well, if the Batrider's not letting you single pull, is he going to let you stack? Not at all. Yeah. No, it's the same thing. It's just as easy to stop as you pulling. Um, so the, on top of that, though, um, when you went and pulled that big camp there, or you were trying to go pull the big camp, I'll simply tell you that based on the proximity of that to the offlane, heroes compared to your small camp if the opponent's yeah. not letting you pull your small camp no way in hell are they going to let you pull it's that the big camp yeah yeah so the big camps are much more like the lanes shoved at their tower um yeah so that it's kind of like the lanes right here you know where my mouse is so you yes. pull here it's like if the yes. lanes all the way up here you can pull here oh that makes sense so it's like it, because the way the lane is it's like you want the hero to be... The reason why I told you it was beneficial for Batrider to stop your pull is because by stopping your pull, he's not near your jug, right? Yes, he's not. My but if you pull this camp, Batrider can be right here, and he's near your jug, and he's stopping you. Yes, that's true. So that's how I like to think. It's like, if it's right next to the lane, it just doesn't do anything, right? So, it doesn't do anything, you're yeah, right. Yeah, so that's what I was. Uh, I wanted to get at with that. So just That makes sense. Yeah. Now that you're doing a lot of the right things, I can now talk to you about like when they're right, when they're wrong, you know. And, and look at this guy. Look at this. Look yeah, at this, this guy's nutty, huh? chasing. Yeah, he's just like, dude, seriously, <laughs> man. How... Like all the way here, this is my home. The disrespect. I didn't invite you here. It was like. That's true. You didn't. There... Yeah. Okay. There it is. Okay, you got okay. your level two. I would say 99% got... of games you're going to take your aura at level 2. I understand you probably took Frostbite in order to adjust to the boars. I think that's why yes, you did it here. That was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Your hero just doesn't really have enough mana to cast both of your spells <laughs> if you uh you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I just wanted to have it just in case the boar was there okay. and I can just kill it really quickly. So whenever you make inefficiencies, 
you are stuck with this choice between do I delay my frostbite an extra level or do I delay my mana an extra level? So in this yeah. case, you chose the extra or delay the mana. All I'm telling you is that's why we try to avoid the inefficiencies in the first place because neither of those I decisions sounds very good, right? And that's right. but that's and your on, lesson learned, right? You, you know what's so funny? When I pick frostbite, I'm just like I have no mana for this. That's what I was. I, I, I remember what you said to me. I'm just like, and here's the thing when he was just trying to chase me. And there you go. There you go. He's And we got that kill because, yeah, you're right. Because he's away from lane. Um, Enchantress was there to help out and I got to pull. You would have died like, there last session because you didn't have a windlace. <laughs> yes, exactly. I would have died if I didn't have a windlace. You're right. And it's like, we got the windlace. I'm like, windlace. And there you go. We're killing that. These guys were obviously playing as a team and we were like just random, you know, these were friends from chat and they got mad. They were angry like mid game because I think we put up a good fight um, early game. We put up a good fight. So yeah, I'd say so far so good. And the cool thing about this is with all the inefficiencies that you've had, you didn't buy your stick super early. You took the point in, yeah. in uh, Nova rather than Frostbite you're still mm. able to function in the lane. And that's why in your bracket, it's so great to start learning these thoughts because in my bracket, if Bro. I miss skill like that, I actually just lose my lane terribly. If, like, if that, you what? If I'm saying if I miss skill, like if I take the wrong skill at level one really? in the right matchup, I'll lose 100% like in any lane. If it's a heavily favored that, lane for me, it'll go even. If it's a heavily even, like if it's an even lane, the other guy will crush me. Like I'm telling you in my bracket, you skill incorrectly at level one, it wins or loses you the lane. Like that's Coach B. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I have the question. No, go ahead. And and that's because people at your level have uh, know how to play so efficiently already that when someone makes a wrong decision, they automatically punish Absolutely. their opponent. Absolutely. Because like for me, for instance, I know you are supposed to skill frostbite, so I would mm -hmm. know that I could do something in return. If I was a beastmaster and they had a five position crystal maiden, I wouldn't even skill boar in the first place. Like I would just go axes. Mm. Like, just to be yeah. fair, like, the, the funny thing is, you didn't skill Frostbite, and he also messed up by skilling Boar. I think that's, like, the the funniest thing is, yes. like, you both yes. messed up, we, but that's the cool thing about you your... You both made the wrong decision, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of funny, like, uh, the point is that all these things only really add up if the opponent is doing everything correctly. So even though you had a few inefficiencies with your item and skill build, your overall play has been pretty good, which means you're still going to win the lane, which is... Great. So as you're getting higher and higher MMR, it's going to take more and more doing things right, you know, to to win your lane. Exactly. So, um, Coach over, B, I yeah, just I just I just realized something. This is why it's so important to focus and know how to play efficiently with heroes because you just said it yourself. Optimal play is knowing how to play efficiently and punish people for mistakes. You won't be able to do that if you're distracted and just do all these many things in playing the game you need to learn how to play dota efficiently and by doing that you need to focus on these concepts early in your game as much as possible or early in your dota journey as much as possible because if you're not you're not going to get to that level as an immortal or people in your bracket where you know how to punish these people for wrong decisions i you could just be coaching twitch chat right now i just want to say <laughs> that uh i was gonna say it's really good to buy a century to de ward yeah. around the area you just did, and then you just bow one. So, you know, that's that was pretty hype. I got excited when I saw the sentry being flown out. You got excited? The, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was I, hype. Bought, I bought this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and we're, we're getting them, man. We're getting them here. I'm just like, oh, there you go. You got Nova in the face. That's what you get for disrespecting my home, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I just. No, you're good. You're good. So, yeah. right now. I would say you have two good options. Can you come up with them right now? You just got to kill. So this is a great question to ask yourself after you get a kill. Because oh after we God, get killed, such... usually we're missing health. Usually we're missing mana. Like one or both of those things. We usually yeah. need to reset somehow. Or we're just not good at doing something immediately. So what I mean by that is like, yes, you just used Omni Slash. You guys are strong. Like you were winning your lane. But now Omni Slash is on cooldown. We need to chill. Okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just used your mm. abilities. You personally have no mana. So, in these moments, you have two good options. What do you think they are? Okay. In this My specific one good... right now. 
in this specific one situation, um, what's the time? It's eight fifteen, right? Eight eleven, right now. Eight eleven. <sighs> okay, so we have low mana. We just got a kill, so it's obviously, but that's just five seconds. Pushing a lane might not be. I was thinking pushing a lane initially. I thought like maybe we can just take a little bit of points off that tower. So my question is, um, but, you have no mana, Jug has no Omni Slash. If you try to push that tower, what happens? They're going to TP to us and kill us. Okay, great. Or just, so that's or not an option. Some, like, At the very least, they'll just repel you, right? Like, they're not yeah. they're not scared of you because you have no mana, your Jug has no Omni. So they're, that's not going to work. So a lot of times after I get kills, if we didn't have to expend cooldowns, for instance, that's a great opportunity to maybe push the tower because we, yeah. we still want to fight or whatever. But, yeah. okay, so now yeah. that we've established that, what are That's two good, good options you can think of? Um, the first one I can think of, since we got a kill and you know they're a little bit pushed back a bit, I can stack just to get my jug. Like it's eight you know. eleven though, so yeah, you're not you're right. gonna be That's stacking for thinking. fifty seconds. Um, eight eleven. Um, the thing I can think of, it's eight eleven. Can I pull again? But it's already a little bit late. I was thinking. Why is it late to pull? The only thing. Um. What time? Oh, it's not even 10 minutes. That's what I was thinking. That's like, that's what I'm thinking. I think pull again. Maybe just pull again. Okay, that's pulling my... in is great. Why would pulling again be great right now? Um, Because, okay, okay, I got it. Because one, um, we just got a kill, so my jug's a bit stronger. So I want to put them back to the lane so that we can take advantage of that matchup. So I'm guessing I want to get the creeps back to our side rather than being at the tower. Are you planning to push the, the tower, tower? We said that no, right? We yeah. said so no, pull we're again not to get push. oh there you go pull again to get them back to where I am okay to where we are that's Great. what I'm thinking everything else um I don't have money for wards um I can't help I can't help so I'm inefficient so I'm guessing pulling again is the first thing that I got the second one I don't know sir I don't know coach push the lanes. TP in this case, mid. do you have to push the lane? No, you're level three and a half. Let's yeah. just TP here and get four creeps worth of XP. Your Shadow Fiend's, oh you know, up here. God. I can do that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, in the in the early game as a support, you're scrounging for every little bit of XP. I would say the perfect play here would be either, like, right after you get this kill, like, right yeah. now, yeah. to TP... TP mid and just get and defend that tower one. You're gonna you stop know, a save, little bit of save. damage on the tower, and then you're gonna get oh like three God. or four creeps worth of XP. And if you uh, don't do that fast enough, I would then go pull. And if the mid wave is still not being farmed, after I pull, I would then go mid. Like that's and the, just push lanes. Yeah, you're just soaking XP. Like at sometimes in this early in the game, you're just soaking XP. I will tell you as a mid laner, if I'm rotating and my supports aren't taking my wave, I get triggered. Because as a mid laner, the last thing I want to do is rotate to another lane and just effectively give up a creep wave worth of XP and gold in the mid lane. Meaning that if I leave and you get it, I don't give a... Like, that's not a loss, right? Like, that's just me handing you the lane. But Coach if B, I... You know, what, you know what's so funny? I never thought this was an option. Yeah, this is absolutely an option. This is one of the most important things for supports to do. If the if your mid laner is either capable of jungling or is rotating, you should 100% yeah. take their lane. Because both of those things just add up to your team as a whole getting more XP and farm. Right? Like, that's the goal is for the total sum of you getting XP and farm compared to the opponent to be more. Right? Like, that's Coach what we're going B. for. Yeah. Coach B, this is a I'm going to write this shit down moment because that's important. Yeah. I'm going to write this shit down moment. Coach B sessions on my notepad right here, putting it on my side. That is, a, I never knew that. So if you get a kill, so let me try to absorb this properly just so yeah, that I can understand great. it well. If we get a kill and I have an options, so if my, if my carry is jungling, uh, or if my carry has the has already has the ability already has the capability capability to jungle i i i i can i should take their take their lane take yeah. their creep take their take their lane take their lane right take yeah. their lane because um because that's a waste of xp 
That's a waste of of XP. And me getting stronger and me getting stronger is us getting stronger. Absolutely. You not being a useless piece of shit is your job, right? If you're it's level 3 at 15 stronger. minutes, you're a yeah. useless piece of shit, right? Like I, I am. Remember how in the lane I told you super early, don't be useless. At 15 minutes, yes. I just need you to be like level 7. You know, I don't need anything super fancy out of you. I guarantee you, unless your team is losing terribly, if I yeah. look at my supports and I see like a level five at level fi at minute fifteen, I'm like, what the hell were you doing this game? Like, yeah. I guarantee you, there was at least eight creep waves that you could have sat under tower soaking XP, and you just that was did. For you. What? I just abandoned that for yeah, you. Yeah, what like is, a, that was your gift. Did yeah. you not see this gift? <laughs> I'm telling you, like, Are unless you you're kidding? super badly losing, like. That's the only time you should ever be super underleveled, is if you're just losing terribly. Oh my terribly. god, this is yeah. so huge. You know what's so funny, Coach V? It's just like before, I was just like, I was very limited to just as a five, right? Because I'm not a four, I'm not roaming. Yeah. But as a five, I just, I was, I had this perspective, I'll stay in my lane for the first 10 minutes. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, but I never really entertained the option that, hey, I can go TP mid one and push the lane and get my mids XP. I can, I can do that when he's not there. It's just like, you're giving me a whole new option for efficiency. Absolutely. Yeah. The whole, uh, the, even the cool thing is, if you know you're yeah. not needed bottom anymore, just say, for instance, yeah. you think your carry's fine without you. If you have, yeah. like, a Storm or SF mid, you could ask them to jungle. You could be like, hey, man, do you mind jungling? I'll take your lane. You know, you can oh, ask my them mind, that. Right. If they just say no, then, you know, whatever. All right. The last thing I want you to do is tell people what to do in that case, because if you tell that guy to jungle and he doesn't think he was supposed to jungle, I guarantee he's going to mess up. I don't know how he's going to mess yeah. up, whether it's, you know, being really like he's going to misplay yeah. somehow. You know, I realize like if I ask somebody something like that, it gives them yeah. the thought to be like, oh, that sounds fine. And then they'll go do it or no. You know, um, I've realized if I try to get people to do shit that they don't understand why they're supposed to do it, then it, it, it leads to, even if it was more efficient overall yeah. to have them do that and me take the lane or whatever it would actually lead to bad things happening because that guy just had no idea and as you go up in the higher brackets higher and higher it'll become more and more likely that your mid laner is willing to give you experience will there be games where they just don't sure and is that guy yeah. completely entitled to say fuck off great yeah he is because he's great. the two yeah. position and you're the five you're picking up the scraps yeah. like in terms of gold xp and all that kind of stuff you're the you're picking up the scraps. You take whatever your team doesn't want, and that's yes, why I yes. told you like it's sometimes really important. Say your carry is like some squishy hero, that if they don't feel safe in lane anymore, that you stay there and defend the tower as long as you can, because you're effectively gonna like tank a gank for them. You know you're gonna like yeah. force the attention upon yourself rather than upon them. And a lot of supports mm. at my level, even like I'm when I say 800 morals, like that really is the bracket where people don't play support that well um compared really? to how high of mmr they are yes because a lot of it is like core players who are like high enough mmr to be in my game but they don't play support so they just have absolutely no clue how to play support but at like the most basic level i just say if my carry wants to leave i immediately ask myself can i take that lane like can i without just feeding miserably sometimes you taking the mid lane would be you cowering in these trees right here in XP range, where, like, mm. you're just getting the creep XP as it's dying, right? Um, oh, I love that. Like, that's, that's far better than most other things you could be doing, right? Like, if nobody's taking the lane. Um, and your willingness or excitedness to take a lane from somebody could be determined by that. Meaning, like, if you feel comfortable farming that lane, by all means, like, that's great. But if you're only just going to sit there and soak... Maybe your mid laner could stay longer. You know, maybe they could be taking the farm because usually if you can only soak, they will also just be able to farm it. So maybe that's not better for you to sit there while they're jungling. My okay, point coach, is though. Can we go ahead? Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can we just try to kind of just solidify this moment? Because yeah, this is I know I go into really a important. lot of depth here. So when you get oh, no, kills, no, 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 no. So ahead. if we get kills, so this is what I wrote down. If my carry already has the capability to jungle, I should take their lane. Yes. Because that's a waste of XP. And Absolutely. me getting stronger is us getting stronger. Doing things that get me to do that to that point 
is a good decision. Absolutely. That's a good decision for me as a support. Like if I'm getting stronger and I can do that, if I can take advantage of a situation that gets me stronger, I am contributing to my team, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. So, and if you're good. Yeah, if your mid can jungle already and your core is good in your lane, you can ask your mid to jungle if they're not doing that already. Absolutely. You can absolutely ask them that. That's and if they say no, you mind. just go, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then even just cowering in the trees and soaking up HP at mid can even be the best decision possible. Yeah. At that situation. Absolutely. Sometimes that will be your best choice. Coach B, what if they're still in lane and let's say I'm in this situation, right? Yeah. Let's say I'm in this exact situation right now, and you're saying TPing mid is the best choice. What if my mid is there already, and he's still choice. hitting? Huh? That's not a choice. That if would... your mid laner is just there. Yeah. So what should I, the best optimal decision then is just to pull, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I gave it. you two I options here because the mid laner was not there. I want the mm -hmm. mid laner not being there to be an immediate trigger to you to be like, that's an option. Anyone here? That was what important. A lane is? That you know, that's an option. Maybe I don't do it but it's an option. Um, a lot of Dota is kind of just like, there's these situations that are good and there has to be like some trigger for it to be good. Like for like taking mid, your mid laner rotated. That should be like an automatic, maybe I go mid. It doesn't mean every time your mid laner rotates, you take his lane, but that is yeah. an option. Like, and that should be something always in the back of your mind that that's an option. It's like, if I'm a mid laner rotating, a lot of my supports that don't know what they're doing, They'll be like level yeah. three Crystal Maiden, and they'll TP to help me gank. And I'm like, I don't want you here. You're a level three get Crystal Maiden with no mana. You know, like, why are you... Get some XP. Yeah, like, get why are you XP. helping me gank? I don't want you here. Like, go away. You know, you're useless. Like, you, you know, we have four heroes here when you contribute absolutely nothing. So whatever you're Coach doing... Me. Go ahead. Yeah, whatever, I'll go in. whatever I'm doing, sorry. I was going to say, whatever you're doing, whether that's early laning, whether that's participating in fights, stop doing it if you're just useless. You know, it applies mm. to carries, too. Like, there's some people that try to fight early on Anti-Mage, and I'm like, why are you fighting? Like, he's like, because I want to help my team. And I'm like, are you useful? <laughs> he's like, no. You're not helping your team by being here. You're a child right now. Yes. Don't go Don't go fight these big guys. Get, yeah. so, get something. Get big, sir. I Eat your vegetables. Get big. Eat your vegetables. Get an AK-47. That's a dark joke, but yeah. anyway um uh coach b i i have this question I, we're gonna go on a bit of a tangent but i think this is a very interesting topic it's so funny that you say that people don't really know how to play support in your bracket yeah and i i think that's because of a certain perspective that i've been heeding all the time it's so hard to get good as a support and scale levels so everyone usually just plays core correct yeah. they just play carry and that's how they get to Immortal or Divine or those high levels. Because getting to a Divine and, and core, uh, divine and Immortal as a core is the easiest way possible, this is probably the reason why most, most people don't know how to play support properly at that level, correct? Because they don't really stick to playing support at a high level. I'll give you the easiest reason why people don't know how to play support. So mm. when I told you you were, you were supposed to go mid, how did you come to that conclusion? Like, why was that good? when uh say that again sir i told you it was a good move to go mid here why was it a good move for you to tp mid why was it a good move for me to tp mid because the option was there and it's gonna get me stronger why is the option there though because my mid went over to jungle okay maybe you get where i'm going with this but what it takes to be good at support is understanding your actions are dictated by what the rest of your team is doing actions are dictated by so the if your mid laner rotates teams. you can take his xp as a mid laner you just do whatever the hell you want whatever's good for your hero you're doing it do it yeah that's what you're gonna do so all you have to do to play mid at a pretty high level is to understand how your hero becomes the strongest and what to do with it as a support it's very simple yes as a support right. you have to understand exactly what your cores are doing how it impacts you why uh -huh. you do what you do based on what they're doing and who yeah. the heroes they are and so yeah. it actually takes you understanding the other four positions in the game to actually play your hero correctly. You have to think of others first, so yes. it requires more... You have to think of others before yourself. On average, ah. at my bracket, most support players that are really good, like the professional-level supports, they are quite capable of playing core heroes because they know 
conceptually what that core hero is supposed to do. Maybe they won't push yes. buttons as well as like an actual core player because they don't play the hero yes. very often. But they like they know exactly how they're supposed to support a lichen. So when they play lichen, they know what they're supposed to do as lichen. You know, they know they, they know they know what a core is supposed to do optimally. Listen, yes, for us exactly. to win, you guys need to do this. Trust me, I've been taking advantage of your situations for a long time. That's basically it. Absolutely. I've been trying to be efficient with all. That is such a good one. Yeah, so that's, in my opinion, why players at my bracket have no idea how to play support because most of them never got forced to think, like, what is my team doing? How does that impact me? What can I do with that? You know, that kind of stuff. Like, how do I fit into this equation? Because as a supporter... It takes a a certain type of personality and perspective to be that kind of player as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, most people don't like thinking like that either. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and I I don't... I'm not naturally like that, but I... I've noticed anyone's capable of it. Like, yeah, you can keep, it, yeah. I just think if what would my like if I'm supporting a jug, I'm like, what would my jug want from me right now? You know, like, yeah, does he want solo XP? Does he want my help? Does he want me to leave? Does he want me to stay? Um, and that's yeah. the kind of stuff where over time, as you're making these decisions, sometimes you'll TP mid here, and then like yeah. 20 seconds later, your jug just dies because you're not helping him, and you're like, that's true. Hmm, maybe I was supposed to stay with my jug there. Maybe mid lane was a bad option. Like so, when I say sometimes mm. it's not the right option, a good example of that would be sometimes as a carry, I need you in my lane. Yeah. Um, yeah. But a lot of times, not necessarily, especially after we get a kill. But the great lesson to be learned here, to kind of progress with what I was going with, was this can be applied at any stage of the game. So when I told you it's time to chill, like it's time to like go do something to reset or whatever. What was the first step to that? How did we come to that conclusion? What was the first thing you thought of when you got this kill? You already mentioned it. Um, what was the first thing? Like I when you thought got this of, kill, uh, what did you think? Uh, push towers. Push that's towers. What, that was right. The, that's what yeah. you thought. Yeah. So how did that's we come to the thing. conclusion together right now? In hindsight, how do we come to the conclusion that you were supposed to go pull or supposed to go take mid? Because pushing towers at our current situation wasn't the optimal. Absolutely. Decision. So when you kill somebody, yeah. what are your two choices? Um, when I kill somebody, I we can push towers or take objectives or reset and chill. Anywhere in between that the- is garbage. Really? Anything else is garbage. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> Anything else? Like it's that simple. Like you ask okay. yourself immediately: Is there an objective t- we can clearly take off this? If the answer is yes. Like, you do, you take it. If you think so, go for it. You know, like, maybe you're not 100% sure. I'm not expecting you to, like, know every answer or whatever. But if, if not, not then you is there a lane to reset. farm? Is there a lane we need to pull back? Like, you know, we talked about in your safe lane. Like, we want to pull it back close to our tower. Like, is there a ward I could go do? You know, is there something I couldn't do if that guy was alive? You know, I think... Is there a lane I can... I can I'll wait till you're done oh, typing and I'll talk about this. Go ahead. No, I want to make sure you're... Because uh, I'm game. writing down your, uh, my chill and reset options. Absolutely. Because that, that was the question I was going to go for. And you were already, I was going to ask you, but you were already enumerating. You were just like, is there a lane I can push, which is a chill and reset option? Um, is there a ward I can, is there a ward I can place? Is there a ward, a ward I can place? And coming from that, Coach B, um, what, what else are, what else are our optimal, what are the most optimal chill and reset options for a team? Um, so let's be, let's just talk a little bit advanced, but honestly, it's quite comprehensible to anyone watching. Um, the reason why you usually take towers is because all the lanes are shoved into them. So like you take a, you win a fight, you look and see the lanes pushed and you're like, oh, this tower's right here. The lane's already pushed. Let's go take it. So on the, there's basically three scenarios that can happen. One, all the lanes are pushed and you're like, oh, great. Either all of them are dead or we didn't use our huge ultimates or whatever. So let's go push that lane or like the one that's closest to us. The second one would be great. We just want to fight. Maybe only like one or two are dead and we used big ultimates. So we don't want to fight them anymore. So it's pretty much we want to fight. We want to fight them again or we want to fight and we don't want to fight them again. So if we don't want to fight them again, then immediately we either in this early stage reset the lane like we talked about with the pull or you just go farm yeah. passively. Like, you're just like, okay, like, they're going to come and react. We're just going to go get extra farm. During the time that that guy's dead, we can farm. So usually I think to myself, like, okay, no tower to take? Great. Let's go back and, um, 
Like, either reset the lane. If none of the lanes need resetting, we just go farm. And a lot of times, it's going to be other lanes. Because if you guys want to fight down here, it means you usually put, like, a large amount of heroes here, right? You put, like, yes. anywhere between yes. two to five. So, yes. since you have so many heroes here, usually that means one of the other lanes is not pushed yet. Usually that means mm -hmm. some other lane on the other side of the map is not pushed. And so, in this yes. case, it's mid, right? And so it's like, I think to myself, just like I told you how you're thinking mid and top, right? And it's like, push those lanes. I'm thinking to myself, if I just want to fight, if we can't get an objective, is there a lane for me to quickly push? Is there a lane I can do that? And if there is no mm -hmm. lane, that's when as a core, I'm like, okay, I'll jungle. As a support, okay, I'm going to go get a ward up. if Or check rune, or take the outpost, or I'm giving you all types of random options to come up with. But as a core, usually it's like, okay, there's no lane to push. I'm going to go jungle. Um, as a support, you got to get a little more creative, you know? <laughs> like uh, Yes, 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 like, I'm seeing that. So, like, in your case, it's like, okay, I, I would immediately look for a lane because I'm level three. I would immediately go, like, okay, is there a lane I can go to? Um, and the answer is, in this case, yes. If the answer was no, you're like, well, I guess I'm stuck here. What's the best thing can I do with that? <laughs> and I'll, all right, like the other option would be like, could I go ward? And then I look at your inventory, no ward. Okay, that's not an option. <laughs> uh, yes. That's fine. I'm not like flaming you for not having a ward or whatever. And then it's like, yes, yes. On top of that, do we want to keep pushing? No, okay. Then let's no. go pull. And sometimes, what if this pull camp wasn't there? Or what if it's already 820 so you can't pull? Maybe yes. you consider go stacking. Maybe you just frostbite this big creep. That's farm. Just get you know? X. Do something. For me. Oh, yeah, just God, do something so for yourself. I'm so good. as a core, I usually think, what's the best thing for me right now? And I just do it. As a support, I try to run down this checklist of like all the things my team might need from me. So like in your case, I would want to prioritize the lane equilibrium for my jug prior to doing anything good for me. Right? Like because mm. I'm a five, he's a one. He's more important in terms of priority list. Once I've kind of run down, does anybody need my help? Or am I capable of helping? In your case, like, since you have no mana, you're not capable of, like, laning or no. anything. Um, no. Once I've run down that, I think, what's the best thing for me? And the two options at that point, like you said, are going to go get XP. And if there's no clear yes. option for that, then make yourself not a useless piece of shit as soon as possible. Whether that means yes. TPing back to base, whether that means immediately ferrying yourself, regen, whatever it is. I love... I love the TP back to base option. I didn't consider that. I'm like, am I going to use a TP? But if the situation enables me to TP home and just go back in lane really quick, then that's a good decision because it enables me to get mana and regen really quickly. And I'm able to contribute back to my team right away. So my question would be, if there was no pull camp and there's no mid lane, why would you not want to just buy regen and stay here? Like, why would you not want to fly yourself like three mangoes right now and then just stay in lane? If, okay. if there's no pull camp... If there's no pull camp and there's no sorry, if there's no pull camp and there's no lane to push, yeah, like there's why no, all I these options go... I mentioned to you, they're all they all suck. Like, say you're in this game and they all suck. Well, like, what why don't I... you think to yourself? Why why would TPing be a better option than just stay? Yeah. Um, because I do not have mana regen. Okay, so I'm right saying now. you could just buy mangoes and stay in lane. Mm. Why would that be worse than TPing home right now? You could just buy mangoes and stay in lane. Why would that worse than TPing home? Um, well, um, wait, right now, in this situation in this that we're in moment, here. very moment, yeah. In this specific uh, why, game. In this very moment, why it's, not, why it's not a good idea to TP home? Yeah, no, I'm saying, so if you're spending gold on mangoes, why would that be yeah. a bad thing? Like, why oh, would TPing bad... home be better than spending money on mangoes? Looking at your gold count right now. Um, why, why, we're, we're answering the question of why TPing home would be a better decision. Yes. Um, well, if I TP home, I don't have to buy mana region and I can buy boots. Absolutely. So for me, I'm like, if I have, if I have 500 gold right now, I'm going to fly myself yeah. boots and two mangoes and I'm going to stay on map. Like, I'm going to keep doing shit down here. Right, but in your case, it's like if you spend money on mana regen, then you don't have boots. So like it's a game changer for you. Like that doesn't sound mm. worth it, right? I'd rather TP home, buy boots, get my and walk, yeah. get your mana back, obviously, because you TP home, get my mana back, and then just walk yes. out, like immediately, like with boots, right? Because you walk out faster. Mm. 
So, like, when I said reset, another option is totally just TP base. Like, if all of these other things suck, you can just TP base, get all your health and mana back, and run back out. Because usually the only reason it's bad to TP base is because there was something better to do. Like, the time you spent going to base could have been better spent warding, getting a rune, taking a lane for XP, you know, whatever. Oh but well, I know, you could TP mid right now, get these three creeps, Shadow Fiend says, I want my lane back, and you'll be like, okay, and you'll just walk to base and get mana, and buy yeah. your boots, right? Like, you'll be like, okay, but that's okay. technically better than just TPing base right now, because you got three creeps worth of XP, then you went to base. <laughs> Yeah, right. because that's an because that's the option that I have currently. But exactly. maybe if Shadow Fiend was there, if Shadow Fiend was there farming his creeps, and at this point in time, hey, um, I'm on cooldown, I have no mana, I'll just TP home, get yeah. my boots, and maybe go back to mid or go back to jug or go back to jug and help him out. Absolutely. As a carry player, it's important to think like sometimes people just TP base after they get kills and stuff because they have like no health. And I said, well, if the yeah. guy's dead, why do you care? You have no health. And he goes, mm. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why didn't you go kill this creep wave while the guy's dead and then TP home? You know, why did you TP home first? Uh, there's a lot of times the beauty of killing heroes is it allows you to do something you otherwise didn't have the luxury to do. As a support, a lot of the times that is TPing home. Because if you TP home and regen while all of them are alive, maybe one of your teammates is going to get ganked and it would have made a difference if you were there, right? Because as a yeah. support, it's like your job to help your team. But yes, when the right. enemy's you're dead, right. you can capitalize on that in ways that you usually don't have the luxury to do, where you can leave your carry when alone. The, when the enemy is dead, you can... Yes. You see Coach, that? I'm going to write this, I'm gonna write this down. Killing heroes gives you... The luxury, luxury of doing something you weren't able to do. Absolutely, weren't able to do <laughs> in regards in regards to efficiency, right? Yeah, because usually a lot of things that limit your efficiency in Dota is just the existence of opponents, right? Like mm. they exist, so you can't farm there. Um, when they're dead, I like to think. Well, the, the really advanced of this is every time I'm playing a matchup, I think, what does this guy do to me? Like what is he like? What are his strengths? What are my strengths and weaknesses and stuff? Yeah. So the minute he dies, I know exactly what he was preventing me from doing. So then I go do that, right? I'm like, you, that, that's you know like what's so funny, Coach B? Yeah. You, you know what I'm realizing, Coach B? I think what you're doing with me, what you're helping with me, is you're giving me a solid foundation of efficiency with this game. You're like, this is your decision making and efficiency the same. And what I'm kind of seeing in the future is. For me to get at a higher level, let's say 3k, 4k, 5k, um, even 6k in the future, is learning what gets in the way of me being able to do those decisions properly. Absolutely. And that's like match matchups, itemization, and all those things. All that's the things what, that come down to matchups and stuff, that's yeah. the only way you're going to gain the perfect understanding of these decisions. What I'm trying mm -hmm. to tell people is, I don't care how good or bad you are at Dota, you can start thinking yeah. about Dota this way. How often you get it right is obviously going to dictate your MMR. But if you're thinking this way, you'll at least understand why you messed up. Like, that's the yes. goal. I think it's very easy in Dota to just have no clue why anything went right or anything went wrong. You have absolutely no clue. You're like, yes. wow, that worked. And then you couldn't possibly replicate it if you tried. Like, that, that, that's, that's or true. that Good. didn't work, and you'll just do it ten times again sometime in the future, right? Um, that's... That's what, like, I've realized in the last year or two for myself is, man, it becomes really obvious most of the time. I've no, It's really funny to me because I know I'm at my proper, like, MMR-ish level because right when I start playing with, like, games that are super high MMR, I start to get into a lot of scenarios I don't feel comfortable because mm. the players on my game are as, as good or better than me, and yes. they're creating scenarios that are just out of my scope of understanding of the game. And I'm like, wow, like this is when I really feel pushed. And then it's funny when I play these like games that the average MMR is 800 or so below mine, all my decisions yeah. feel very clear. I'm like, okay, this is what I got to do. This is like where I got to go. This is what you I know? need to yeah. Like I know exactly, I'm very confident in exactly what I'm doing. And so the goal is to make you think 
at a generally more advanced level than the guys you're playing against. I don't care if you're 1K. You just got to think more advanced than a 1K player. Once you get to 2K, you got to think more advanced than a 2K player. You know that that and that's why Dota can be learned this way, at least in my opinion, because that is so solid. You're applying that the same solid. thought process I am. I have to do it to beat 8Ks. You have to do it to beat 1Ks. You know that is true. But everyone is thinking of the same thing. This yeah. is how you win games. It's just that the best players know every possible trick in the book to be able to take advantage of any situation or make an advantage to be able to be in that situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. So love real quick it. here, I understand you go for the, you're, you, you're underneath your tower and you see yeah. this kill over here and you're gonna like try to contribute, I get that. So now, yeah. this is another example of you didn't get a kill or you went for a kill, you tried to do something. You know, it's the same I idea. Tried to do something. You, you tried to do something. Yeah. I'd say that's probably the best generalization here. What did yeah. we talk about was like the number one thing to think about at this stage in the game um push lanes okay so right now i see three heroes top and i see one right here so i see four of their heroes yeah so what lane could you push i could push um i could push mid or bottom yeah mid or bottom right bottom's already getting yeah. pushed so what's the lane you're supposed to push mid great so right here that's how i think i'm like okay i see these heroes I'm safe enough to do this lane and this lane. That lane's already taken, so this one. You're right. Right? You're so right. Like right I, I should have just... Go ahead. So the decision is to click back to mid and just start pushing that lane. Yeah. Because, I see, because the information that's being given to me at hand, courtesy of my minimap, which honestly, Coach B, I wasn't very much aware of until you're pointing it out right now, which I think is the great, way, the great thing about these reviews, is um, a good decision was could have been made at this point based on the information that was given to me. Yes. And so my goal of initially is like, so whenever I told you like you failed the kill, you got the kill, check your mini map and that helps you do all your options, right? Sometimes you'll mm -hmm. need more check information. Like if you see your mini map and you see a hero pushing your tower, sometimes you'll yeah. have to check his mana. Cause if he has mana, he's really scary. If he doesn't have mana, he doesn't threaten you. Like that's like a advanced version of this. But it's like right here, it's like, I see three top, I see one bottom. Mid lane looks nice and safe right now. And then the next step for me as Crystal Maiden would be that I'm going to try to get a general sense of how often I'm clearing waves. Like, how often do I feel like I'm nuking waves? My question would yeah. be for you, the more often you are, how would that affect your skill build? The more often I'm pushing lanes? Yeah. Well, how would that affect your skill build if you're clearing waves more and more often? Um, how would it affect my skill build if I'm clearing my, uh, how would it affect my skill build if I'm clearing waves more often? Yeah. Well, I'll, 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 I'll get my skills faster because so I'm, I'm getting XP. I'm saying in terms of what abilities you level up, how would that, oh. how would that affect that decision? Oh, I need to get Nova. I yeah. need to build Nova. So my yeah. question for you is, can you say anything wrong with the picture we have with your abilities and your health and mana pool right now? Um, uh, can I see anything wrong with my abilities? Hmm. So my common is well, I... absolutely full mana. Yes. So what might that mean? Um, that, oh, <laughs> I get it. Um, maybe I, I chose, I have absolutely full mana in regards to my skill build, correct? Yes. So does that, does this mean that, um... I maybe should have put a point in Nova and not as much on my passive, Absolutely. My, my third. Absolutely. Mm, because what, I, cause what I'm happening now is like, listen, um, yes, you have mana, but given the situation, people didn't really need it at the time. And maybe you could have had that later. But if you had maybe lower cooldown on your Nova and more, more damage on your Nova, that would have meant you being able to push lanes faster and getting more XP faster, and you would have been able to be a better contribution to your team because you build your skill builds efficiently. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is mm -hmm. the first step is, you know, acknowledging what your skills do for you. So mm -hmm. there was one game I played Jakura recently. I'll pull it up for mm -hmm. you. Just because sure. uh, it's relevant to you. Of course. And where is it here? Let me... Right here. So I looked at my ally heroes 
And Jug's gonna be clearing waves. Void Spirit clears a lot of waves. Like these heroes yeah. farm a lot of waves. And also Snapfire as a support clears a lot of waves. I don't know if you know that, but Snapfire loves to farm waves as a support. And I looked at our really? game and I said, wow, in the early game, our stuns aren't that great. We have Cookie, which is like melee range. We have yeah. Duel, which is melee range. We have yeah. uh, the the Remnant from Void Spirit, but that requires something else to set it up because it's really hard to hit a moving target. And mm. I was like, well, then they have this elusive hero Slark, this elusive hero mm. Storm Spirit. You can't see those, actually. They have Slark, Storm yes. Spirit, and Phoenix. Those are all very elusive heroes, right? Like those are heroes that, that need to be locked down. So I'm like, well, they have no... I My team has a ton of wave clear, but no stuns to catch these guys. What do you think I maxed first? You max uh, your two first. Yeah, your w. absolutely. I had max ice path at level seven. Oh, max ice. So wait, you went. So you went. Um, did you make one? You won three, one, one three, one, and then, then two, 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 two. W yeah. w w. Wow. Do you see how I looked at my teammates, what their heroes do? I looked at the opponent team, and I'm like, what do we need against that? And it affected my skill build. So coach, this is, I have a question. There. Yeah. Um. Uh, and I see how this is an efficient decision. When is it an efficient decision for Maiden to uh, to build your mana pool? And I, I know I know that that is the case where everyone is going to need mana, of course. But how do I know when everyone needs mana? Sometimes I'm not aware of these heroes. Is there something that you can help me with so that I can yeah, say, absolutely. okay, I should definitely need to push passive and um, max my my passive so that these guys have mana because this is happening. So. Um, how how can I do that? Let me tell you right now that your mana spell has absolutely nothing to do with your teammates. So let's just leave it at that first off. So what I mean by that okay. is that, yes, it's nice for your team. I'll tell you as a core, I appreciate it, but I don't rely on it at all. It's not really going to change my game other than maybe I'll use an extra spell or two to farm here and there. Like, uh, it's, it's not going to change my game for you to give me that mana. What I mean by that is it's nice and it helps, but it... I'm not like, dude, if you don't have max aura by eight minutes in, I'm pissed. You know, like that doesn't how I look at Crystal Maiden. So here's how I look at Crystal Maiden. This clears waves. Yes. This locks down heroes that need to get away, like mobile heroes. Like this prevents yeah. them from using their abilities that are mobile. Yes. And this is like a big team fight damage spell. If I don't yeah, need those things, I level that. I get this. Coach B? Yeah. Um, right now, I know that it takes understanding my matchups to be able to know how to do this properly. Absolutely. Right? So for now, can you give me maybe a general, optimal, one-size-fits-all um, scaling for um, abilities with Absolutely. Crystal Maiden? So on Crystal Maiden, her, her aura goes to two, or her doubles when it goes to two. For you personally, three mana regions... A solid amount especially when you're buying clarity since clarities are so efficient nowadays um i would say the majority of games if i had to like i i like to explain to people as this is the perfect game if i could choose one every game this is what i would do i would yes. go one one two so depending. one one two i'm one, one, saying two. like okay. at level four you're gonna have one point in both of your nukes and you're gonna have two points in aura and then after that, you're going to max your Crystal Nova, and you're not going to level your ult at 6. I'm not going to level my ult at 6? No. Look at your mana pool and look at your three spells added together. This is blowing my mind right now, Coach B. Are you serious? I don't. plus I don't, 140 is 340, plus 130 is 470. I, you don't even I have don't mana have to cast all I need all a shit ton of mangoes to be able to do this. <laughs> you need like a full wand plus, you know... Yeah. So... This is an ideal okay. game. Why? Because you're giving a little bit of mana to yourself and your team, enough so that you can sustain, use your spells, um, and then you have your max Q for, because it also helps in fights, your first spell, it helps in fights, and it also clears waves. So that's why it's like the ideal skill for you to max. And if, like, what you'll end up learning is some games, you're just not clearing any waves. Some games, you guys have no lockdown for super elusive heroes. And in that case, like, your Q really did nothing. Like, I was like, wow, our problem was we couldn't catch this guy. So I guess I should have leveled this. You know, like, my point is, I, I think it's a great question you asked, what is my default skill build? 
So what I started doing was, okay, I learned this is what the default is. This is what I'll usually do. What are the strengths and weaknesses of this build? Like, what does this hero do really well in this case? And what does it maybe struggle against in this case? Mm -hmm. And so for you, it's like, if there's no ways to clear and there's a bunch of heroes that are going on you and nobody stuns them, not having your W could really hurt you there. Like, that could yes, really backfire. True. So I'll start to be like, oh, if the game looks like this... I'll start maxing my W. And a lot of this is going to be learned by you just playing, playing yeah. and struggling because... And you're like, wow, we had no lockdown. Sometimes your hero can't do anything about it. You know, sometimes yeah. you're just like, well, shit. You know? But the main thing that I tell people is, like I told you, having that one spell with the wave clear makes it so, easy, so much easier to play Dota at your bracket because almost nobody clears waves and it's always a great yes. option... Yes, yes. To have. Right? I realize. Go ahead. You know what's so funny, Coach? There was yeah. a situation where. Oh my God, wait, come here. You gotta say hi. This is my son. This is Ryder. Aww. Hello. Hey. Say hi, Coach B. Hi, Coach B. Yeah, hi. Say hi, Coach B. Hi, Coach B. Okay, oh my there God, he adorable. is. Adorable. Holy crap. That's my little. Your, your future support. Future there you support. Go. Yeah, mom just gave me some food. Thank you, honey. Love you. Thank you. All right, honey. Bye. I'll see you later. You play Dota with your tent. Okay. 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 Thank you, honey. That's too cute yeah, for that's... Twitch's eyes, to be honest. You know, uh, they, they don't deserve what? that level of cuteness. What? Uh, oh, kids? Yeah. That, that, that was totally adorable. Thank you for. Uh, I might have to try to get that sound bite of him saying hi, Coach uh, B. Yeah, please, please, please go for it. I'm gonna send you that sound bite. Don't worry. I'll be happy. Me and my me and my wife just get so thing when he loves saying hi to people, so we love that when we see it. So awesome. we we just get giddy when we see our son on stream at any point. We just like, oh look at him. Uh, it's it's funny. But uh okay, so coming from that, uh what was I gonna ask? It it's so funny when you were saying that when you learn your if you focus on heroes, you learn how to play that hero the most efficiently and i learned there was an option where i see that hey um pushing lanes really gives an impact in this game this is around maybe the 15 20 minute mark and i said okay if pushing lanes really gives us a decent advantage i'm gonna i'm gonna use my love my minus two talent on nova with uh, okay. Crystal Maiden, I was like minus two because okay, at first there, it's minus two or some other thing. I think it's a uh, eight percent magic or, uh, or yeah, yes, right. So in this situation at fifteen, I was just like, well, my my team doesn't necessarily. We're not really getting punished with magic spells right now, so the best way I can really contribute is to if I can just wave clear the shit out of the you know of this game, and I pick. A negative the minus three is that minus three minus two uh, minus two sec so I picked the minus two and I was just like dude like when I went minus two I found myself just pushing waves a lot faster and I was just like okay this is making a decent impact and that's because I'm focusing on this hero and learning how to make an impact in the game um, better absolutely no I, I... That's a perfect example. I'm kind of just playing through the game until I see another point to talk about. But yeah, no, that's uh, I absolutely agree with that. And a small side note is after I buy tranquils on almost every support, I buy another windlace. Why not another? That's 20? what's up. Why not a twenty that's... other twenty movement speed? You you're absolutely right about that. Sometimes I I don't know what to build because I'm like maybe I should build glimmer, or I should build this. But sometimes the item decisions. I think itemization is going to be one of our future really big um, discussion points. Absolutely. I think on Crystal Maiden, as default, you can pretty much assume you're going to go Trangles and another Windlace every single game. Really? And I think okay. one, too, because you know, you're so squishy and you also have uh, man issues. But even notice in this game that I'm a huge... I'm proud because I saw Boots, Windlace, Stick, Trangles, then Wand, right? Like, yeah. that. that's when you can be like, okay, Wand. I would even I, argue... I, Tranquils before, sorry, another windlace before the wand. Before wand, yes. Could have been worth it. But um, I listened to you. I'm just like, don't, don't, don't go wand. <laughs> you know, it's it's a. I was just like, I can hear, I can hear. Coach I can hear Beast him voice. in the back. Like, what are you doing with that extra two hundred, man? What are you doing with that two fifty? You know, you got to do it for something else. 
and yeah, I uh, wand was a luxury, and uh, it is a luxury I kind of. Oh yeah, that ult did it. Oh, nice. That was. I just kind of expended the ult with Terror Blade because they were really strong. So I'm just like, I'm gonna kill Terror Blade. As in general, if you smoke for a pick off like that on Crystal Maiden, kind of just dump your whole load and you know hope it works. Was out. that the like, correct decision? I yeah. just felt like let's just let's just get I, this dude. It's better than like not killing him. Yeah. No. 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 Do not hold back on spells. Uh, Let it go. I would say that on average you'll learn to hold back. Maybe you'll be like, ah, maybe I didn't need it there. But yeah. I'm just telling you, if you like hold back and it just happens to like cost you the kill, that can be yeah. like game losing. I can't stand it when my supports hold their spells and we just don't kill the guy. So I'd much rather you waste a spell technically, meaning it wasn't needed, yeah. than hold the spell and not let it work. <laughs> you, um, you know what's so funny, Coach B? Yeah. There was a situation where these guys were playing really, really well and they're moving well. And what it did is it got me, because I I tended to just listen to my instincts when to like let the let my uh, let my uh, ult go with Crystal Maiden, and that has worked for me so far. But what has gotten what I realized was like a detrimental thing of thinking about is when. I'm thinking I'm thinking too much of the team and what they're doing that gets me to hesitate in making those decisions. And I remember when they were pushing, um, they were winning the game, and they were pushing, um, they were pushing uh, top racks, uh, top tower racks on Radiant. And I realized I was waiting a little bit more than usual before letting go of my ult. It's like, okay, they're playing really well. I have to find the best moment to do it, and they end up killing me. So, um, yeah, I think the instinct of basically, you know, listening to your instincts and not letting your uh, the other team kind of influence your instincts, I, I think is an important thing to uh, note. Absolutely. No, I, I, I assure you guys when I'm watching, I assure you and everyone watching that I am listening. Um, I think you have to... It's really hard, but the goal is to look at as a support is to look at the game through your teammates' eyes. But it's also important to think, like, what do I have to do for myself? You know, um, like why I mentioned your mana ability is it's mm. like at the end of the day, I want you to do what makes your game easier to play. I want you to yeah. do like if there's an item that makes you just not feed, I'd rather yes. you buy that item. If there's like mm. a, if you don't feel comfortable going in first. There's very few... There are some supports whose literal job is to walk in and die. Kind of like Undying and Ogre mm. and stuff like that. But we're not playing those right now. So it's like... Yes. Don't go outside of your hero's capability or don't limit your hero's capability because you're concerned about your teammates. At mm. the end of the day, I'm giving you a lot of things to think about, a lot of guidelines, but you also just have to go with it. There's a lot of stuff yes. that in the middle of the game, you're not going to be able to think about it when it's happening you're just in, yes. especially in fights especially yes. in fights and a lot of my learning about fights is just by self-reflection after it happened you know like mm. i had this idea going into the fight um as you get better and better on these heroes you'll be like okay i know i'm gonna cast this spell on this guy and that spell on this guy and i gotta yeah. look out for this guy but at the current yeah. moment just kind of roll with it and all i'm saying is like yeah. to pay attention generally like how are you dying you know, what is your limit to how far you can walk up, you know, like, yes. what, so that gives you a start thinking about positioning. I think your positioning has been pretty good. And nice. what I want to ask you is if you could give me your best summary, let's see, other than this play right here, can you yeah. give me your best summary? We're going to follow starting now. When you're okay. fighting and anytime else, what does your gameplay consist of? Like, what is your hero doing? Just watch yourself um, for like three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Okay, what is my hero doing? In in regards to team fights? In everything, farming, team fights, everything. My hero is pushing lanes. This ape. Um. Well, my hero is push lanes. My def My hero definitely pushes lanes, and I think that's one a very important factor with okay. her. Um. In team fights, like right there, uh, what did you offer? Last team fight, what did you do? Let's like let's um, rewind I, it real quick. Okay, okay. I disabled and then I took advantage of being able to have my AOE burst, which is here. I was in an optimal position to take advantage of their position. Force the disruptor ult on yourself. That was fine. Yes. 
which was a good thing at least. And then I kited because, yeah, and then oof. So my gameplay is to basically, uh, oh, that's a tough question. I know it is. My, it's not meant to be an easy answer. Yeah, that's my, for my, my hero pushes lanes for sure. Okay. My hero also disables. Okay. My hero can take advantage of a team of opponents being at a certain place, a certain same zone at the same time at team fights. Okay. If I'm in a place where I know they can't get me or stun me and I they're in the range of my ult, then I can burst them down and help my team obviously kill them, right? Yeah. Or also I can provide a safe zone for my teammates during my ult if there's a certain situation where maybe they're that much close to getting killed. They're like, okay, just kite back to me because we have this AoE damage sort of safe zone. So the cool thing so, I'm going to ask you about your ult since you're on that topic is... Yeah. Now, I know you... You Feel free to repeat anything you've said in relevance to this question. Like, if you've already said it, feel free to repeat it if it's an answer to this question. What sure. do you think your ult does in fights? Like, positives of your ult. What are the benefits the of this ability? The positives of my ult kills people. Okay. The positive of my ult forces people to focus their skills on me instead Absolutely. of my core. Um, the positives of my ult, um, well, kills people, forces people to focus on me. Uh, the positives of my ult takes advantage of um, two heroes being there together. Like, let's say, opponents, if they're just all in the same place. It also provides a safe zone for my teammates. Big thing, yeah. Like, let, absolutely. Like, yeah, let's like say, daring like, the hey. opponent to fight into you, kind of thing. Yes. Or let's say they're about to kill my opponents. Hey, listen, man, just kite back to me. They're about to kill you. You know, just let me be the guy that takes the takes the kill. Yeah. And just get it, get out of here. You and know, the major because thing they you're have saying to... is it punishes if they're grouped up, and it makes the opponent yes. immediately have to shift their focus to you. It's very yes, similar because... to like Phoenix Egg. It's like if they're fighting yes. within the aura of or the range of your ult and they're ignoring you, they're yes. probably dying, right? Like, so some someone in chat just said armor as well. I didn't know. Yeah, that. I was actually gonna mention that too, but it gives you twenty armor. No. Yeah. So wait, when I'm ulted? Yeah, you go from four 20? armor to twenty. Yeah, twenty-four. What? The, so when I'm casting, that AOE range gives my teammates twenty armor. No, you get 20 armor i get 20 armor yeah, yeah look, look, look here we go here we go uh rewind here what the hell uh rewind watch your armor <gasps> it's 20 coach yeah, B. yeah so you go from let's rewind here I just go from give, a support to a core just to I'm give just you like, some hey. quick maths okay <laughs> so i like to talk yeah. in ehp at the end of the day, you can yeah. hear my final answer. You have 3% yeah. or you have 3 armor, 18% yeah. physical resistance. That's yes. approximately 24% extra health, okay? Yes. Meaning yes. right clicks, it probably takes about 1100 damage to kill you. Okay? Like if yes. they're hitting you with physical damage, about 1100. When you ult, you now have 60% physical resistance. Which makes them oh have to do 250% of your health to kill you, okay? So you wow. go from 1,100 health of right clicks to dying to about 2,300. Wait, 2,300? Yeah, what I'm saying is if this Terror Blade's right clicking you, when you're not ulted, yeah. it takes him 1,100 damage to kill you. Yes. When you are ulted, it'll take him 2,300 damage to kill you. Okay. So it is a nice, I'm getting right clicked by this guy, oh shit, you know? Like that's that's Coach a, B, this is yeah. a bit of, this is a bit of a stupid question, but I do want to understand the math. I mean my math isn't really the best, this is why I'm a host. Yeah. I'm just joking. Um but how do you get to twenty three hundred? I just okay, want to get yeah. the Okay, the uh, math I will correct. go as slow but as clear as I possibly can. So Thank you so much. Thank you. You have sixty percent physical resistance. You see that? Sixty percent. It's a little bit blurry, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay, but, sorry. Uh, it says physical resistance sixty percent. So physical what that means, resistance 60%. Okay. So what that means is if the guy theoretically is hitting you for 100 health or 100 damage, I get you take 40. I get I get 40, yeah. Yeah, you take 40 damage. So I'm what that just, means okay. is if you have zero armor and he had to hit you and he had and he hits for 100, yeah. It's going to take him let's say you have 900 health, nice round number. 
It's going to take him yeah. nine attacks to... You know, we'll do it a nice round number, actually. You have 500 yes, health. Yes, yes. You have 500 health. Yes. If he does 100 yes, damage, sir. it's going to take him five attacks to kill you. Right? Yes, yes. yes but if yes, he's hitting yes, you it. for 40, because you have 60% yeah. physical resistance yes. right now, yes. it's going to take him 12 and a half attacks to kill you. 12 and a half right clicks. I get this. Yes, yes. So I'm, you so go far. from taking five right clicks to 12 and a half to killing you. I got this. Yes, this, this so is easy. So your I got effective this. HP is two and a half times because five or 12 and a half divided by five is yes. two and a half. Yes. So I take that number, two and a half, and I multiply it by your actual health mm. because it takes two and a half times as much damage to kill you as it would if you had no armor. So two right now you have 920. Times. So two and a half times 920 is about 2300. Okay, but armor affects me in a way that... How does one point of armor affect my life? So, they change the numbers a lot, but in general, yeah. the way it works is... I believe it is 6% for every armor you have. So, okay. what that means, though... Just try to follow me, I hate to do this. Is yes. It's 6%, but it's multiplicative. Which means the first armor gives you 6% resistance, okay? Yes. The second yes. armor gives you 6% of the remaining 94%. So it's technically like 5.7% rather okay. than 6%. And then the okay. next armor gives you 6% of the remaining 88%, Six. right? Okay. So yes. eventually armor gets less and less helpful. Like it's diminishing oh. returns on armor. It's okay. So well, you know what I'm going to do, yeah. Coach B? I'm... This is going to be somewhat of a waste of time if I keep keep asking you questions. Yeah. So I'm going to watch a video on this. Okay. Just to get the math and then but I get the concept. It's just that I'm not putting two and two together yeah, as well as I Yeah, the overall like goal was to tell you if you push yeah. R right now, it takes way yeah. more damage to kill you and yeah. like I wanted it to be like I I want people to understand the general math of how Dota works, but also at yes. the same time if you just understand it gives you like two and a half like two, almost twice as or like yes. more than twice as much yes. health to physical yes. damage then maybe you'll be like yes. oh shit this guy's doing a lot of physical damage to me push it you know like uh, i agree that's... i agree and also i think because knowing this math is going to get you a better player yeah i can feel it i just feel it, it does. like this it little math that like, your calculations i'm like it it'll also get you to make sound decisions team fight based on the information that you see because you know the math yeah. So I know I'm gonna make it a note to really know and master that math eventually. Yeah, yeah I right want now, you to know thinking... generally how it works is the first step. Yeah, but to really know it, uh, that's gonna that could be an advanced thing. I think that's something okay. I can take it. But for now, it's just like if I have more armor and more HP, they're, it's harder for them to kill me in right. So let's just leave it at that. The cool thing is that you gave me pretty much all the benefits of your ult. Okay, and so when it yes. comes to approaching team fights. That's the way you learn how to use spells over time. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. what does my spell do? And you said it creates this AoE that the opponent doesn't want to fight into. It yes. kills them if they're grouped up. And it draws all the attention to myself. Honestly, yes. if you know that, it becomes pretty straightforward when to cast your ult in team fights. Oh my god, because you're, you're like, right. holy shit, I don't want them to go on this guy. I want them on me. You know? Come get me, you know? And then you'll cast your ult. Um, so like for me. I think this is what my ability offers. That like, is so no, it's that is so important. Yeah. I just realized, like just now, I just felt the shift. You're just saying this is what your alt does, so that's gonna help you make better decisions in team fight. I'm just like that shift in perspective is just like exactly this is what my yeah. spells does. Yeah, and so it's, this is. What, go ahead. I'd never, I never, I didn't see that, coach, and I think that's really, really helpful. I think the funny thing about this is I'll tell you that sometimes mm. people get it wrong. But you're you're you know you're relatively new to Dota. You, you're in the one cam of our bracket, but yes. you still got the answer right. Like I asked you yes. what your ult did, and I guarantee yeah. you the problem is most players they don't think about. That. They don't. But the minute I ask them, they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, like this is what it does." And I'm like, "Yes." Then why are you misusing it? I'm not saying you misused it here, but you know if you know what your ability does, why aren't you doing it when it does that? <laughs> like when it when it. Why aren't you using it when that would be a good time to, to use that? But exactly the overall message I was going to give you, and I don't need to rewind, is from the 17-minute mark to the 21-minute mark-ish. If you yes. watch this, you obviously casted your ult once. It's a long cooldown. Get it. Yes. Like that's When it comes to big 
cooldowns. It really just comes down to when is this best used, use it. Yes. But if you watch the remaining portion of your gameplay, 80% yes. of it is you sitting in the back pushing Q. Yes. Would you agree that most of your time was spent on the outskirts of the fight pushing Q? I would say so, yes. Sometimes like, as much you, as I still... Like, sometimes you walked up and frostbit somebody. Like, sometimes you did yes. that. But when it yes. came to farming, when it came to fighting, most of the time, you were just in the Q, back man. pushing Q. So, yes. did I have to coach you that that was the way Crystal Manon is supposed to be played? Um, no, you just you made that, that very apparent. I never, yeah, I never you just told made that you that, very though. apparent. And, yes. But did you come to this, like, you naturally started playing Crystal Maiden like this after, like, five games. Like, you just sat in the back and yes. cashed your queue. Like, that's what you've been doing. Yes. So, yes. what I think is hilarious is how somebody like you can come mm. to the conclusion yourself, based on what I'm watching, okay? Like, when I yes. say this, I mean, I'm watching you, in terms of positioning, play Crystal Maiden pretty well. Like, you're sitting in back, you're kiting them pretty decently. You're yes. staying at a specific, like, range that's safe. And yet yes. I look at you, you don't max your Q. That's true, yes. Isn't that hilarious that you can come that... to the right conclusion on how to play the hero, but you can't put the skill points in the right ability? Yes. Like, isn't that, yes. like, isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, uh, so, yes. like, what I'm saying is usually every hero, almost every hero in the game, has this, like, natural way that you're going to settle in to play. Like... You're going to be like, wow, I realized in team fights I'm most impactful by just pushing Q off cooldown. Like, that's what I'm yes. going to be sitting in the back and I'm going to be, you know, hitting people with my Frost Novas. And that's yet, true. they won't max their Frost Nova. And it's like, the only games where you're not going to have that be your max skill is where yes. you try to do that and it just didn't work. <laughs> and you're mm -hmm. like, well, I maxed Frost Nova and then Storm Spear jumped on top of me and killed me. <laughs> yes. And Which means I needed to maybe max frost a bit just to get that stun when exactly, he jumps in. Exactly, right? So it's like, yeah. Yeah. what you'll oh, start I remember, doing, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I remember, Coach, is... Oh, no, make your point first, because it was important. What I was going to say is that you have this ideal way of playing, yeah. and the only reason you'll ever have to mix up your skill build is because whatever the weakness of that is, which if the strength of your hero is to sit in the back casting Q, if I ask yeah. you that, what is the counter to that? Like, what beats that from the opponent's team? Like, in general. Not a specific hero, but, like, a general concept. What do they have to do if, to punish that? But they have to jump on me and kill me. Yeah, they have to jump you from long range and kill you. Yeah, yeah. So when the they opponent to, has a lot of heroes that jump you from long range and kill you, that would be a game you might have to consider changing your skill build because this is how the way mm -hmm. your hero likes to play. That's what beats it. They have it. Maybe I'll have to mix it up a little bit, you know? My point is, what, you know, you'll you'll yeah. you can start thinking about heroes this way. It's, it can be at a very basic level, you know. It's like on Jakiro, usually I like to push towers and stuff. But if they just kill me when I push the tower, maybe I'm not a push tower hero this game. Maybe I'm just a sit in the back casting ice path. You know, I don't want to play Jakiro that way. If I yeah. ideally, I would want to play Jakiro as the guy that pushes liquid fire on towers and takes a bunch of buildings. But if my hero is not capable of doing that this game in your case as a crystal maiden if you're not capable of sitting in the back and casting your spells you might have to not level your skills normally right so obviously like my end of my point is that you already figured out without me coaching you exactly how crystal maiden plays fights just whenever you're learning a new hero whenever you're playing a hero try to pay attention like to the best of your capability like this is what i was doing most of the time you know, like, yeah. now what skill helps me do that? What items help me do that? It's like... But you know what, Coach, Coach B, the reason I'm able to make those calls is because you've gave, you've, you've um, helped me understand the concept of what it takes to play efficiently. Okay. Because you told me to push lanes and everything. Um, that's because you've helped me understand what it takes to... I'm able to make these decisions because you've helped me understand what it takes to play efficiently to win a Dodo game. Okay. I'll take credit. Yeah, and I think that's what helped because what guided me, I'm saying this as well because maybe for people in my MMR, uh, same MMR might be on chat. I'm just saying, 
I'm able to make these calls is because I understood the basic concept and the core concept of what it takes to win a Dota game, which is pushing lanes and, you know, making sure your carries are taken care of. In my sense, I'm like, I definitely max Nova because that's what does. Honestly, coach, I'll just say this now. Early on, my first few Crystal Maiden games, I was maxing Nova first. Okay. But chat told me to always max my third. I remember that. I remember that. And that's when I started maxing my third. I remember that. Let's my just friends... remember that your chat yeah. probably has good intentions because I've learned yes. that the chat is usually like the streamer in the sense that if the streamer has a good attitude and all that, usually the chat will be. That's why my chat's terrible. No, I'm kidding. But for you, I expect your chat to probably be very helpful and stuff. But most very of them helpful, yeah. are trash. Okay. Let's just remember that. So I want you to be willing to let them help you. Yes. But you can't just take them verbatim. I I okay. almost think in the near future, maybe by like the third or fourth session, session, even if you're 1K and your chat's average is 3K, you'll know more about yeah. Dota than they will. You think so? I'm telling you, like you're you've been very receptive of what I've been teaching you, and yes. you're applying it at a much higher level than 1K already. Yes. So. Okay. If you continue to think like this, I want you to feel confident thinking for yourself. But at the same time, yes. if somebody mentions, hey, Ari, your W kills the boar, dude. Then they're like, yeah. okay, you should immediately be like, oh yeah, you know? That's a good decision, That yeah. That, that, that makes sense to me. If you can't yes. validate to yourself why whatever they were saying made sense, yes. then just do what you were already doing. Do what I was, what you were teaching me. And yeah. chat, listen to my chat. Don't worry. I mean, I don't want them to not try to help you. Not necessarily trash, but just not as good as BSG. Hey, you, you know, That's I'm just brutal. A, you know? Know? Say, <laughs> no, no, I got it. I got you. I'm just, I'm, I'm. Cut. It's the dad in me. It's the dad yeah, in me. I got you. Things. Console them. No, but console them with. I got you. you. But basically, just try to answer their quest. Like, try to make sense to me. The boar is like the boar. Uh, frostbite was inarguable. I'm like, yeah, that was definitely a good decision in that sense. We saw but your maybe juke on Terrorblade just now, by the way. But continue. Did you see it? Can you yeah. go back? Can you go back? Oh my god, I'll let's rewind. do it. Oh my. Dude, he was like gonna get me. This is my first ever juke. Let's go. There you go. Here we go, boys. This is my first ever juke. And he had Elus, so I broke three ankles, not one. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, oh, oh what are you doing? Oh, Where did he go? No little dance. Oh, spin that <laughs> one. That got me so hyped, coach. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie that, to you that, though. That's the beauty I, of Dota is I tell you what your job in the game is, yeah. And you were pushing the lane, you got yeah. threatened, and now you're yeah. like, oh shit, how do I get out of this? You know? And yeah. you, sometimes you just gotta go with it. You know? Like, uh, yeah, I just gotta yeah, yeah. Figure it out, and it looks like you know uh, you figured it out, dude. That was that was. Uh, that I just want to say that's that exactly what I'm going for. I want you to be on the right part of the map, doing the right thing, and then from there, it's all you, right? Like. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out. That was an ancient, live. That was an ancient terror blade too. I was just like, hey man, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but you made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, that's part of it. Utilizing the trees yeah. is actually a really important part of Dota. Oh, uh, and uh, outplaying feels just such so good. Yeah, I mean, man. you know, that's the joy. I mean, everyone's just trying to outplay each other. And you, listen, if if you outplay me, fair game. That was freaking amazing because you freaking did it. I mean. Be, doing your best to outplay someone who's trying to outplay you feels really good, man. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, once I started really understanding the concepts of Dota like I'm talking to you yeah. about, outplays happen way more often, man. Because if you're in the right place oh, on the map fun. and you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing, yeah. then at that point you just have to push buttons. Like, you just have to yeah. push buttons yeah. correctly. And yeah. that's the beauty of it is that, that once you get the concepts down, there's nothing else to worry about. You know, you just... Let's just have fun. Let's, let's play. Just push, yeah, let's play some Dota and push some skills. And honestly, that's one of the funnest parts about Dota. So you went and warded deeply here and got picked off. Yeah. I that's like your wards because they're around crucial objectives. Uh, yes. Just being very careful. Like, your next step for you is to just try to learn why you're dying you know was the opponent yes. missing you know was it too far but i want you to make these mistakes these are the type of mistakes yes. where you're like okay i'm trying to ward aggressively i thought i could yes. do this i still randomly feed you know when i'm playing support yes. I'll, I'll try to do a ward and die um yeah just do your best to like reflect you know was it because the enemy team was missing was it because i didn't have my first back yet Maybe I could have smoked as well, you know, yeah. I think that will Absolutely. smoke to just kind of check and peek through. Oh, they're all here. Let's go. <laughs> Never mind. That Absolutely. could have been maybe a good good usage of smoke at that time because I had it. Absolutely. 
All of those things are correct. So you actually TP behind them. Sadly, your pickoff did result in a Roche. And I will say, just in general, I probably would have almost snapped bot back there the second they walked into Roche. Um, I get if it. If you guys are winning against a light up with a lot of carries, and you're a support, and you die, and the yeah. opponent walks into Roche... Buy you back. pretty much just have to buy back. Yeah, like, okay. Okay. I would say that's a rule of thumb. If you die and it leads to the opponent getting Roche, you just kind of have to buy back. Like, unless okay, your okay. team is, like, all bottom and they're just, like, letting it go, you know? I Meaning, like, it looks like nobody else on your team's even remotely ready to to be there. Yeah. But in this case, your team was. Um, It's kind of like, I want my four staff, but I messed up somehow. Yeah. I'm buying back. You know, you without a four staff alive is much more impactful than you with a four staff letting them get Roche. You know, like that's how I look at this decision. And so it's know, an auto buyback. It's yeah, an auto, I buyback, auto buyback there. Like the second they walk into Roche, I just auto buyback. Yeah, auto buyback. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like a pretty strict guideline. You know, if I die and it leads to a Roche. Yeah. Like if it, the same thing applies if they're like pushing your base too, right? Like, yeah. When if it's like a tier one tower, you don't have to buy back, right? But Roche yeah. and like tier threes, those are big yes. objectives, right? So wait, this applies to tier threes as well. Um, a lot of the time, yes. If a you, lot of the time. So. Usually, if it's tier threes, I'll let a fight start and then buy back. Yeah, because I can TP instantly. But in the case yeah. of Roche, I have to like TP and then walk to Roche. So if I don't buy yeah. back like ahead of time then I'm just, like, not going to be there, right? Like, the, so that's a situation where you see them walk into Roche and you're like, guess I got to buy back, you know, hit that button. So um, just you something to, to think about. Back. Just it, Basically, I'm telling you to acknowledge the importance of Roche and that no item yep. as a five position that you'll ever buy is more important than them getting Roche. It, no getting, item is more important. Honestly, that was going to be our next topic this this episode. Like, why when to take Roche and why Roche is so important. Um... And uh, I, I, we've, we've, no, but we've discussed so many important concepts, which is great. But just to touch on Roche a little bit, because I think I, I'm getting the dead lane concept. Yeah. And, and we're hitting those objectives. And I think the next step is, because what, coming from what I've, what we've had on our first episode, it was like, Aerie, go for the dead lane, go for the mid towers, get tier one, maybe tier twos. Yeah. Right. And then, then you go Roche. I remember you saying this and I think that's the next step here. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, like knowing how to play Roche and understanding why Roche is so important. Oh, I mean, Roche is... I would say like 80% of games I watch at your bracket are around 3K even, like all the way up to there. Even at the high bracket, it still happens, but like a large majority of games at your bracket are lost at Roche. Like they're just... It's the lack really? of understanding of Roche at all. Um, okay, can you help me understand Roche just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I'll do my best. So, for instance, in this game, like, from a high-level Why did we lose? Because here, we, we wa I think it's safe to say we kind of won our lane, did we? We uh, did. Uh, you guys were up by 2k, I think, at 14 minutes? Something like that? But we still lost. This is yeah. what I wanted to understand with this game. I'm like, we, I, I pretty much know that we won our lane, but we still lost. That, that's why I wanted to show this game. I was like, what, what happened Okay, here? so I'm going to... I'm going to talk about these enemy heroes, and I'm going to hear your perspective. This is the only way I can ask you. So I okay. understand that you do not understand these heroes at the level I do. I'm not meant to be no, condescending, but I understand that. I want everyone to yes, know when I ask this question, I understand that. So the yeah. goal, though, is to try to get you to think about heroes as best you can. So okay, my question would be, when you see Terrorblade Alk... Can we go overview, uh, Coach, Coach uh, B, just so that I see... Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, Perfect. I was thinking of a way to show them to you, and I couldn't think of it, but there you go. So you it's see perfect. Terrorblade Alk, right? Those are their yeah. two late gamers. Are are you... Yeah. I hate to be condescending. You you are aware that their two late gamers are Terrorblade Alk, right? Um, to, no. Um, I have an idea... No, uh, late, game, late game heroes, early game heroes, um, that is a concept I don't fully understand okay. yet. So I would say it's safe to say that you look at their mid and you look at their carry... And at least one of them, maybe both of them in your bracket, will be very late game heavy. Um, yeah. So, let's just look at the hero list. 
Like, Here's I'm, a question, I'm, Coach B. Just, just to kind of like, th- I feel that there's a um, opportunity to ask a question. What defines a late game hero? What defines an early game hero as a core? I mean, what what are those things that will define a late game okay. hero or opposite of that? This first off is really hard to describe, but yeah, I've theory crafted this a lot because I've gotten this question a lot. Okay. So, what you will notice is at okay. I'm going to ask you a funny question. If you are a Crystal Maiden yes. with 40,000 net worth, are you still killable? Like, I say you crystal, have man. BKB, Heart of Tarask, Shivas, every item you could possibly imagine to survive, are you still killable? Um, am I still killable? I'm not sure how to answer that question because I, I'm not familiar with the items that you mentioned. Okay, okay, but... okay. I'll ask a better question. Are there any amount of items you could buy in a game where if you got three man ganked, you'd live? Yes, there is. As a crystal maiden, yes. if three year heroes killed you or went on you by themselves, like you were all alone, you could survive. Oh no, right? they would kill. They would kill me. They oh, would kill. That's me, what I'm yeah. asking. They would kill you 100. percent Yes, they would kill me for the sure. The definition, yes. in my opinion, of a late gamer is whatever items they naturally build into, eventually they become very hard to kill. Eventually. So a late, a late gamer is someone that eventually becomes very hard to kill. Whether or not that's by elusiveness in the form of Storm, he has all the mana in the world, becomes very hard to lock him down. Whether or not that's tankiness, because Spectre has Dispersion and she becomes tankier and tankier as the game goes on. Whether or not it's Anti-Mage, because he has Manta and he can blink away. Whether or not mm. that's uh, Terrorblade, who has multiple illusions plus Sunder. Whether or not that's mm. Slark, who has you know an ult that gives him percent HP and he can survive and yep. build, build, like blink, uh, pounce away and all that kind of stuff. Wraith King has a second life. Uh, life Stealer has a built-in BKB. If you look at heroes yep. that are not carries, they have no items and no abilities that make them naturally harder to kill as the game goes on. Like yes. in forty minutes. You're right. Doom is the same hero you're trying to kill as he was at 10 minutes into the game. Like, his survivability is a movement speed ability, and yeah. he dooms you, right? Like, mm-hmm. But nothing about oh, this, this kit, so if he gets four-man yeah. ganked, is making him harder to kill. If this yes. hero is on a creep wave in the enemy team's vision at 40 minutes, he's gonna die. Like, mm. that's how I look at carries, though. It's like in the late game, if you see an Alk on a wave that's not always just like go kill that guy you know he's not killable yep. you don't want to try to kill that guy like he doesn't it feels very scary so i don't actually have a better way to explain this in my opinion like the idea of late no, coach, gamers this, no this is a great uh, explanation because i kind of just had a little bit of an aha moment right now yeah anybody can be a core absolutely these five anybody can be a core but because the reason there are cores and supports, mids, carries, and supports, it's a distribution of resources. Yeah. There's only a set amount of resources that can be distributed to everyone. Ideally, you want everyone to get a do you want everyone to be a core at like maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, correct? Yeah, like, like ideally you'd if, want everyone if, to have net worth. Yeah, if you want if you want everyone to win, but because of there's only a limited amount of distribution of resources, only certain amounts can be a core. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And that's why you have cores and supports. I'm going to help you get to that point where you're the hardest to kill so that we win this game. Exactly. So, so a defin- a de- coming from that, I think what your definition is is very, very... It's accurate. It's like anyone who, who can eventually be harder to kill is a late game hero. Additional question, Coach B. What is a hero that most of the time, even if they get our items or in most situations, are considered a not a late game core? Like, you know what? Most of the time, this hero is going to be really easy to kill if we kind of take advantage of positioning or something, or get catch them off guard. So, like, super late game, heroes like Luna, mm. Bloodseeker, they fall mm. off. Because Here. Luna's yeah. ability to stay alive is pretty much standing still and pushing Satanic. That's pretty much her way of surviving. And Bloodseeker, other than running really fast, which at some point in the game, you know, people are tanky, He like, his only way of surviving is a BKB. Like, that's the only way... None of Bloodseeker's abilities make him live. Like, this makes him take more damage. This is an aggressive ability. 
This is only good mm. if people are low health, and this is mm. only good for aggression. None of these abilities protect him. Same with so Luna. you're saying, so you're saying, Coach B, oh, that the definition is not just net worth and how how strong their items make them. It's also how well their abilities mix into those items. Absolutely. So, like, one of the hardest heroes to deal with in the late game is Gyrocopter. Mm. Because, like, recently. Because he has this Ag Scepter that allows him to have a second attack every 1.1. 1 .1. Mm. And mm. so, even if he... Or 1.2. Even if he's stunned, this still goes off. Even if you stun, it so, still goes off. So, first off, even if he's stunned, it goes off. So, if you have a Satanic, you get stunned for less. And that uh, this right-click from this ability life steals and so imagine a gyrocopter with satanic and a rapier right and you yes, try to satanic. go on him and he's got he doesn't get stunned for very long because he has satanic and the minute he's not stunned he pushes satanic and goes back to full health because he has a rapier right the and then all stops. of his attacks hit everybody so it's hmm. like like if you look at the scariness of gyro as the game goes on he's one of the scariest heroes in the game because if he can stand his ground and hit you, you die. And he doesn't die. Like, But on and, the other hand, Luna, yeah, if she's stunned, she that. just dies. Like, She'll just die at some point in the game. And the way a hero like Luna is yeah. really good, heroes like Luna are what I like to call hard semi-carries. What I mean by that is they are your one position. They are going to get a lot of farm. They are going to be your carry. But if the game lasts for an hour, you're probably not winning. Mm. Like because a, we can just jump at you. We'll be strong enough to just just kind of delete you. Just eventually, like your toolkit will not function. Like Eventually, it's not going to work. So the thing about Dota that makes it not black and white is that Anti-Mage, what is his natural survivability? It's a blink, magic. and it's yes. magic resistance. Yes. So if you're Anti-Mage against a lot of stuns and a ton of physical damage, your, your hero does not that. scale at all. Like, you will just die. A lot of stuns. If you're anti with a lot of stuns and a lot of physical... Because he has magic resistance, Because he has magic right? resistance built into his mm -hmm. kit, right? And so, that's why he needs to farm so much. Yeah, so the thing is, the hardest counters to anti-mage are single-target physical damage heroes that like Ursa. stun. Ursa's Ursa. good, but the hardest counters are Slardar, PA... And any heroes that prevent oh, you from blinking. Oh, because PA has that stun. Yeah, because it's just like, PA gets Abyssal. Because uh, PA eventually... And she's all single target physical damage. Right? So, right. like, that's all that she is. Also Terra Blade, because he's really high physical damage. And then he reflects you, so you mana burn yourself. But the idea is, every hero has this natural way of scaling. Mm. So, what I do when I'm looking at a Dota game... Is I try to figure out, how does this hero scale... If that applies this game, that is the latest game hero, right? Mm. So it's like... Can you the, say that again, Coach B? That was important. the way that this hero scales works in this game, meaning, like, if you're anti-mage against, like, Zeus, uh, you know, Gyrocopter, who's a lot of magical damage, and a Lushrak or something, you know, those are the three enemy cores. They're all magic like, okay, damage. I am the biggest problem. It's like I eventually, once you have your level 25 magic resistance, which is an extra 20%, they just do no damage. Like, eventually, you will win the game because they can't kill you anymore. Um, they can't kill AM. Yeah, exactly. They can't kill anti anymore. I love that. So it's like, be... as Ursa, his main issue is getting kited. So if the enemy team has the inability to kite you because they don't have very many stuns, and not very if, much mobility. Can you say that again, Coach? If, if the enemy team... Doesn't have very so, many stuns, and doesn't have very much mobility, which those are the key to kiting somebody, then yes. Ursa's like one of the best heroes in the game as it goes on, even though he's not considered a late gamer. So you can't we, slow me down. You can't yeah, slow me down. You, you can't, can't run stop me from hitting you, you then Ursa's like one of the best heroes in the game. Sense. Thus, Makes sense. one of the reasons why Venomancer is the hardest Ursa counter in the entire game. Because... At no point in the game, slowed, you're right. you just get slowed by per him permanently. Like, you're just always slowed, yeah. and you're like, I want to hit people! And then you're just yeah. slowed, right? So, like, against Venomancer, who slows you all the time, the heroes that scale the best are the ones that blink on top of you, or jump on top of you from random ranges. Like, they have abilities that don't give a crap you. about getting slowed, right? So... 
it's like in Dota, when I talk about late gamers, they have natural scaling in terms of their survivability. Like they have some ability that makes them live. And then you look at the opponent team and you're like, that's really good against that. And you're like, okay, that scale. So I'm going to give you examples. I'll just talk about I heroes one by one when we're in your replays. Like that's all I can really do. Um, yeah, and... no, but that's 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 the basic step. Can yeah. I can I write this down, Coach? Because Absolutely. This is important. Go ahead. Go I'm ahead. just gonna try to absorb this as best I can because I think this is just hugely Absolutely. important. Okay, what defines a late game hero is making them harder harder to kill the the later we go to the game. Exactly. To the game. Um, that would depend. That would depend on how they scale their items yeah how, how, how they uh, how they how they build their items and how those items how those items play well with their abilities Absolutely. or complement and how those items that's just i'm just trying to just kind of no, summarize fine. put in your own words that'll help you yes complement well with their abilities um whether that be elusive whether that be tankiness elusiveness magic resistance resistance armor so physical resistance armor magic magic burst um uh physical burst physical burst these these are all valid these are all valid factors yep valid fa this is huge coach because at least you've given me like a general way to look at it yeah rather than just trying to look at each individual hero you're giving me factors that help me define what this hero is absolutely like, and that depends really on the game but at least with this perspective you're helping me look at different heroes and just helping me you're just i'm just i'm gonna learn to define it for myself oh that's what you gotta do but i yeah i okay. i've i've learned slowly but surely from coaching that i have to give the general approach because it applies to everybody like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what bracket you are. I can tell you this general approach, and even then I'm still learning how to coach. Like, I've never had an in-depth discussion on carries before, like, what makes a carry. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but the thing is, I think the way I analyze matchups, a 5K player can learn from this. So, like, that's the cool thing about having a conversation yeah. like and this. And you're still learning. That's, that's the exciting thing. I it's still like, learn these things. There's games where I think if I pick my hero, I'm going to win late. And then I something's just gonna blow your mind eventually, yeah. even at your level. You're yeah, just like you something's gonna blow my mind. Just someone's gonna learn. show me something, and I'm gonna be like, "Oh my god, that just totally did not see that coming." Absolutely, I love that. So I love that. I'm just gonna tell you we're, we are a bit over two hours, so I'm gonna wrap it up with this point, yes, yes. but not necessarily rushing. But we are gonna wrap it up with this point. So we're gonna talk yes, about yes, yes. this game from late game perspective. We're gonna use this game okay. as a bit of a practice to talk about yes. matchups. Yes. So for the sake of our first lesson. I'm going to mainly come from the perspective of the mid and the safe laner, but okay. I'm going to briefly talk about how other heroes come into play with affecting that. Because a lot of okay. people will ask me questions like, hey, BSJ, if it's Spectre versus Anti-Mage late game, who wins? If it's Spectre and versus I'll be like, well, generally this hero will win, but it does depend on the other heroes in the game. Like, there's some yeah. games where, depending on the matchups, Spectre would win. And then depending yeah. on the other four heroes on anti Mage's team, maybe he would win. So we're going to okay, talk about... We're, I'm going to talk a bit about like individual matchups between cores, but I'm also going to talk about how other heroes play into this. So okay. let's talk about from your team's perspective. You have a Jug. What is his natural version of survivability? Um, his natural version of survivability is... Because when he spins, he doesn't take magic damage. He's right? magic immune, yes. He's magic immune, so his movement speed is pretty good. Um, but um, I think the main thing that gets him is when he spins his he spins. magic immune. That's his main so source a, of survivability. A, so a if counter, he is magic immune, a, 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 how do you kill Jug? You just uh, you right click him. You right click. Okay, so the what shit is his him. weakness in the late game? Uh, right clicking. Someone who right clicks really fast, which okay. is basically uh, what's his face? Um, Alk, right? Alk and Terrorblade. And Terrorblade. Terrorblade okay. is 100% physical damage. Alk is 100% physical damage. Oh, so that's a crazy counter against... Um, so as the face? game uh, goes on, Jug becomes easier and easier to kill for these heroes. Mm -hmm. Because all they do is build right-click items. And all they do mm -hmm. is get better and better at hitting people. So Jug will become worse in the game. 
When you compare mm. that matchup to Jug versus Ember, for instance, Ember builds okay. like Maelstrom and Ags, which makes him do more magic damage. That matchup scales very well for Jug yes. because he doesn't take very much magic damage, and very Ember healthy. being an elusive hero, eventually Jug will have an Abyssal and kill you in two seconds. So mm. that's an example where Jug really likes that matchup, while Jug mm -hmm. does not like Terra Blade and Alk. Not only that, but what type of damage does Jug do? Damage, you know, I'm not sure. Is trying. it magical is he or physical? physical? He's, so he's in, physical, right? In the early game, his main source of damage is spin. So he does a lot of magic damage. But yes. as the game goes on, the spin does the same amount of damage as it did at five minutes in, while mm. his physical damage goes up, right? Yes. So later on in the game, he's very good at physical damage. Do you know Terra Blade's yes. base armor? No. So every hero in the game, I'd say somewhere between one to seven armor. Okay? Yes. What Terra Blade's base? Yeah, he was hard to kill, man. No vile sorcery. 18? 10 and a half. 10 and a half? He what has like hell? four higher base armor than anyone else in the game. Four higher? What His the hell? His agi gain so is 4.8. Highest agi gain in the game. What? So he moves really quick and he freaking... He so can just, right click I'm just going to show you a level 30 Terra Blade with no items. Okay? Yeah. This is with no items. He has 37 or 34 armor with no items. 34 armor with no items. So if we give what? him items that he usually buys. Yes. Oh my god, look at those numbers. He has 51 armor. What the hell? Like, these are items he will naturally buy, right? This is a reasonable-looking mm -hmm. six-slotted Terra Blade. And he has yeah. 51 armor. And Jug is purely physical damage. Terra Blade's way of surviving is he has Illusions and Sunder. So what Sunder yeah. does is it swaps... You know what Sunder does, right? As an ability um, or not? No, sir. It swaps your health with somebody else. Percentage-based. So what? if you have 20% health and I have 100... Or if I have 20% health and you have 100%, I swap you. It's like Avenge, but so with like, life. So, like, if you do this. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> and he has a level 25 talent that makes his Sunder 8 second cooldown. How do you counter that shit? So, would you say that having an 8 second cooldown ability that swaps health with somebody is a natural way to survive? Yes, absolutely. And you also have a bajillion armor, so it's really hard to kill you really fast. And you this also have illusions that do a ton of damage. That's insane. So, if you look at Terra Blade, his agi gain and armor gain is insane. His strength yes. gain is 1.7. That's terrible. So, yeah. if you look at Terra Blade, what does he die to? Um, if I look, he at doesn't get very much health, but he gets a shit ton of armor. He and doesn't he, get his very way much of surviving health. is he has multiple targets, like he has illusions and shit. So, what beats yes, Terra Blade late game? Um, magic dam. Wait, armor. Wait. Magic damage, sure. Yes, magic damage. Um, he has low armor late game, yes? He has high armor, low HP. High armor, low HP. So if I'm going to kill Terror Blade, high armor, I need to be able to burst him quickly and contain him, I guess. You need to be able to have AoE that kills his illusions or at least stuns them because otherwise mm -hmm. they're killing you. And because yeah. he has an ability that swaps you health, you need to be able to kill him very fast, right? So magic yes, burst quick damage. Or, or stun him or silence him, basically. Yeah, so magic can, burst you... damage is what deals with Terror Blade late game. So if Terra Blades mm. against like Pugna, Lion, Zeus, 50 minutes in the game, this may this hero may die instantly. Mm. Six slotted, he could die instantly. Mm. But there's some games like this one. Yeah, I'm gonna re I'm gonna go back here. Your Jug, almost all physical damage. Yeah. Shadowfiend, almost all physical damage. On dying late game yeah. doesn't do damage. You late game, yeah. he has a BKB, you don't do damage. Uh, yeah. Enchanter single target. Doesn't really do damage. It's only with right clicks. It's pure, sure, but it's just it's like it's not fast, right? You're kind of like hitting people continuously. So in the late game with Sunder, I'm never dying on Terra Blade mm -hmm. against your lineup. I'm just never dying. And that's why you lost. So what I look at is Jug gets easier and easier to kill with these heroes. Terra Blade gets harder and harder to kill against these heroes. So we needed to end like 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, you have to be at a point where he can't kill your Jug and your Jug still bursts him. Which mm -hmm. probably like is required to you being ahead by like ten thousand and at thirty minutes and then ending the game before forty, something like that. Um the big thing I will point out too is Jug is magic immune. So a lot of his scaling is based on the fact that he's magic immune. BKB yeah. piercing ult on uh Batrider. Lasso goes through BKB. Yes. 
He has a BKB Beast Master piercing. Roar goes through BKB. Oh wow! So you guys, the opponent also has two stuns that go through BKB against your hero, whose sole way of surviving is magic immunity. So for instance, if your Jug picked last year, he's just bad. Hmm. Like I'm not meaning to be rude, but like this is just a yeah. bad pick. Like if he picked that last year, because there's a bunch of heroes that kill him, and his hero. Like, and he saw, so, like, when I'm looking at these heroes, I'm like, how do they scale? How do they kill me? Like, what's their natural items they're going to build? And that's how I understand matchups. Like, it's like, that's how that hero scales. So, SF, so, like, he's yeah. a hero that's ranged, does a lot of physical damage if he wants to, or does yeah. a lot of magical. Yes. But he doesn't do a ton. Like, eventually, one of the two won't do enough. Like, he won't, he, do, he he's like a semi-carry, where, like, 30 to 40 yeah. minutes in... His physical damage is pretty nuts, but like 50 minutes yeah. in, the way he got physical damage was by his abilities, which are all flat numbers, okay? Like, they're all flat. So what I mean is... The, he way, gets, the way he gets physicals in, sorry. Um, uh, Ricky, the way okay. he gets physical damage on SF is by killing creeps. Don't look at my stats. Yeah. So yeah. he gets damage from souls, which mm. um, every soul he has is, th is two damage, so he gets 72 damage. At 10 minutes into the game, he has 72 bonus damage. At 30 minutes in the game... He has 72 bonus damage. Wow. So eventually, he's not going to do as much physical damage as these other heroes. Where Terrorblade, his illusions are percent damage based. So mm -hmm. at twenty min at 10 minutes into the game, if I hit for 70, my illusion hits for 42. At, wow. At 20. 50 minutes into the game, if I hit for 400, my illusion hits for 240. Right? Like, oh, all wow. of my damage just keeps going higher. Right. So, is it safe to say that when there's a Terror Blade, you just have to just end early and just kill him as much as possible? Yeah. If you don't have magic burst damage, yes, you absolutely do. You do have to end the game. Terror Blade is one of the scariest late gamers. He's like one of the 1v5ers of Dota. Like so Invoker is a good counter to Terror Blade. Invoker is a great counter to Terror Blade. Invoker, yeah. backline nukers. Uh, Zeus, mm -hmm. Invoker, Pugna. Necrophos is a pu hey, lion is great. Necrophos is great because Terrorblade relies on sundering you, sundering you when you're low health, and you just Reaper sight them when he's when he's low health. Yeah. Shaman, um, shaman's reasonable. The thing about shaman yeah. is you have to stand there channeling your um, yes. disable, and Terrorblade's illusions will actually just kill you. Oh, that is true. The, the, right. Now the difference is lion has an AOE impale, which stuns the illusions as well, and then he doesn't have to stand still to stun you, right? So Lion's really good against Terrorblade, but Shaman is not. So that's an example. Which one? Go ahead. What's the best one of your four heroes? That's a good counter. What are the, the four, four heroes? heroes Jakiro. I, I have Maiden, Jakiro, Pugna, and Shadow Shaman. I'd say Shaman's the worst. The other three are pretty decent. Okay. But, okay. like, the thing is, if the game goes to 50 minutes, none of your support... Like, Pugna would be the best, but none of them are going to be any good. Like, Terrorblade. If he gets to that point and you're the only hero that's good against him, it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Because you're Life a five and is, he's a one. Life drain is a uh, magic damage. Yeah, uh, Pugna's all magic. He's literally all mm. magic. Magic amps magic. Magic magic. Right. So, I get it, sir. I get it. I get yeah. it. So that's what got us to lose. It's because we didn't. We had very high physical damage heroes that scaled well, and it was a really huge counter to our two biggest cores because they can delete Shadow Shaman. Uh, I mean, uh, Shadow Fiend and Jug instantly. Yes. And we couldn't really hold them very well. We couldn't contain them very well. Your only well. We stun was you. <laughs> that, so we, we lost that draft pretty bad. You had a harder game plan to execute than they did. You had to like win the game by 30, 35. Mm -hmm. And as long as they lived past 35 minutes, they were probably winning. So like, I would call this an out draft for them, but you still have a win condition. You know, like you could have won the game super early. And what since was our win condition? Just, your, just win, to... your win condition was pretty much to be ahead out of the lanes like you were. Which and we then were. to kill their outer towers like you did, take Roche without dying, and mm. then on the second Aegis, end the game. Pretty much every time they have superior late game, the way you win is kind of come out on top on the lanes, take the tier 1 mid, take the tier 1 top, then take Roche. Use that Roche because what happens is the reason why Jug falls off this game is because they have single target spells that kill him. The Batrider yeah. Lasso, the Beastmaster Roar. And the reason why yeah. Roche is so important is if Jug has two lives, they can't afford to throw all of those spells onto Jug and kill him. That's true. That's because true. he'll just come back, right? And if that's part of why it's hard to play the carry, meaning like in specific games, I can't enter fights as carry because 
they have this volley of spells that just kill me, yeah. I can suddenly play fights now because I have an Aegis, mm -hmm. right? Like, because I have this second life and the opponent team cannot afford to just throw all of their abilities on me and kill me because then they lose, right? They'll lose the fight because they used which, all their spells on me. Which gives Jux the, uh, the ability to maneuver more and yeah, just Yeah, he more can damage. play more aggressively. He can push towers mm -hmm. when he would previously be scared of getting bursted. Um, he's able to play the game much differently. So the reason and why Roche is so important is giving that guy the ability to play with that second life gives them more damage effectively. It gives them more objective taking potential objective, yes. like, uh, generally. And, um, like some games like this one where their condition is killing your jug with all of their abilities, like they will kill your jug, by the way, um, with yes. all of their abilities. Yes. If you lose Roche, you lose the game. Because yes. your Jug just can't play. Like, he can't play. He's going to get bursted. And there's no amount of items he can build that doesn't make him and get that's bursted. That's why Roche is so important. Because it gives you that additional factor to use your initial resources and advantage over again. It yes. gives you one more pass at being Absolutely. one more chance to keep going again. And that could be the main difference. I mean, when we're look talking about, you know, little micro advantages... Roche is like a gigantic advantage. Absolutely. And there are some games where you'll hear in my stream where teammates of mine will say, that Roche didn't matter. Like, let them have it. And the answer yeah. is because maybe we can just kill that guy as easily twice as we could have killed him once. Like, with whatever mm -hmm. lineup we have, if the guy dies once, he'll die again. Like, mm -hmm. based on his positioning, say it's like a drow or, you know, like a sniper, like some ranged squishy hero where if we yeah. kill them and they respawn, we'll just kill them again. Right? Um... That's an example where high-level players will realize, like, this is what Aegis offers you. Some games, it just really doesn't matter that much. Some games, say I was the opponent here, I have better yeah. late game, and I'm like, this Jug needs that Aegis. Sometimes, yes. I'll just try to take Roche, because I don't want you to have it. Like, mm. I'll be like, this Jug absolutely needs this Aegis. If he doesn't get it, we win. So, yes. we'll just take Roche for the sake of denying it to you, rather than... Mm it really benefiting us like um that's a lot about understanding roche so as an objective as a whole that is why objective is, or roche is so important there's a lot of games that are heavily decided by who has that second life sometimes yeah. it's just impossible to play the fight as a carry without that second life so if one carry has it and he can go crazy and the other carry yeah. has to sit back scared until something happens yes. that can decide the entire fight that can decide who wins like the entire game so and I think it's safe to say, Coach B, that it's uh, most of the time Roche is a huge factor. It's going to be rare time. that it's it's not going to be like Roche doesn't matter. You rarely say that. You it's, rarely say that. I would say, would you say 70, 80 percent? Yes. Maybe it's even the more? same reason as me saying most of the time on Crystal Maiden, you're going to max your Nova. Some games yeah. it just doesn't work. Most of the time, mm -hmm. Roche is very important. Sometimes, because of if you truly understand exactly why Roche is important, you'll be able to pinpoint the games where it doesn't matter. The okay. thing is that at your bracket, when we're trying to get you to 4 to 5K, right? Like like whatever we're trying yeah. to get you to, I just I need be you at the to, highest, I just I need be you to understand that 80%, right? I just yeah. need you to understand Roche very important. Like, this is what it offers you. Very important. Yeah. Like, you're going to max Chris Nova. Very important. And on your own, you'll start to understand the, the exceptions, right? There's some times where that just doesn't apply. And as long as you're focused on why it's important and focused on why you're leveling your skills or whatever, mm -hmm. the times where it doesn't work, you're going to just naturally realize like, oh, my skill does this, it didn't work because that doesn't offer anything in this game. Like this game particularly, like me sitting in back nuking people just didn't work. And you'll be like, yeah. why? Was it because they had this hero? Was it because... You know, I didn't have a uh, four staff to help myself. You know, was it like, what was it? And, you know, what's so funny, coach. Yeah. We, we didn't really, we planned to explain and understand Roche. Yeah. And we had a very spontaneous topic about what makes a, Carry. what makes a uh, late game hero and not. Yeah. But I, just by the sheer explanation of what makes a late game hero already, some already defines how important Roche is. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. It's just like. Well, because it's That's connected. True. You're just like, I didn't think listen, because 
Yeah, no, you, you've already defined it for me because I'm just like, just because Coach B just def it explained what makes a late game hero. Honestly, there's just going to be a hero that is going to be the defining factor of why that team wins. It could be one or two, right? Yeah. And when they get stronger, they're going to kill you because, yeah. and that's the person you have to kill. If you have to kill that person twice, then most guaranteed you're going to lose. Yeah. To wrap up this yeah. session, I just want to show you a quick replay. I just want to show you my Please. game. So, Please. in my case, I'm just going to talk about it. In the late game, Please. Beastmaster, physical damage. Kunkka is physical damage. Uh, yeah. Lifestealer is physical damage. Even Luna makes her team do more physical, even though her ult is magical. So, yes. at the late stage of the game, the opponent team is primarily physical. But they because they have Beastmaster physical. Roar, they have Kunkka Boat, they have Luna Ultimate... Yeah. They're also a lot of burst damage. So and in this, stuns. Yeah, they have a lot of stuns and a lot of burst. And there's no amount of items my hero can buy that won't just make me die full to zero if I'm standing in front. Mm. So what happens is, if I don't have Who's Aegis... Your hero? I'm Troll Warlord, make... I'm sorry. Troll I'm a physical yeah, damage, like he has high armor. Yeah. Like, look at Troll's armor. I'm yeah. sitting at 35 armor right now. Yeah. Like, that's pretty solid. My point, it though, is, is, is that... They're a lineup that has a ton of a ton of burst and a lot of physical. So yeah. I'm a hero. I picked a hero that's very hard to burst with physical damage. And if you don't quite burst me, I have a button that makes me survive. So that's why Which I is. picked this hero, right? So that's why in this game I picked. If I don't have an Aegis, though, they can just throw everything on me. But because I have an that's Aegis, it. I'm just going to just, like, I'll fast forward through this. But they just keep yeah. throwing spells on me, but they're not allowed to commit onto me. And I don't care if because I'm at half health, because if I die, I worst case scenario, I have Aegis. I'm just sitting here, and, hitting Oh my buildings. god, I see it. I see it. They're, they can't, they can't, because you're going to out-commit, you're going to out-physical damage them, because there's yeah. two of them. Exactly, and eventually, they're going to like come out of position like that, and they're going to die. But like, if I'm not, if I'm afraid of dying, I couldn't run in there and kill them, because yeah. I'm afraid of dying. But this whole game is me with an Aegis, hitting their high ground, just standing there, watching how many spells they're throwing on me. And they just can't yeah. commit. They they can't commit to me. If I had if I didn't have an Aegis here, they would have just bursted me full to zero and thrown all their spells. And I'd you took you you took away their advantage of being able to really physical damage like crazy, like burst, because like you took their burst advantage. Yes, and that's what Aegis does in the late game. So even if my hero like, even if my hero was a good late gamer, if they can burst me, this Aegis makes me like ten times better. Like, it makes me just a ten times better hero. And that's why it's so important ending the game. Because you're, like, on their high ground. You're th presenting your body to them to kill, right? Like, they're all right there. They see you. They can just throw all yeah. of their spells on you. And because I have this Aegis, they just can't. And if they do, so it, I'll respawn and kill them, right? So in this case, you getting the a Aegis for this game with you guys was the win condition. Yes. You needed to get Aegis. I can't go high ground without my Aegis. And if I understand why I need my Aegis... I'll understand mm. what it takes to go high ground, right? So if, if they denied Aegis, then they would have won the game. Yeah, I, I we would have never been able to end this game if I don't have an Aegis. Oh, So effectively, they may not win, but they delay the game it. at least 8 to 11 minutes until the next yeah. Aegis, because I can't walk high ground until I have it. Like, that's... So, like, if you... If for the, in your game, where the Jug needs an Aegis to push high ground... If the opponent takes Roche, they delay the game 8 to 11 minutes. Like, they delay the game. They'll make it last another 8 to 11 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit of doing that, right? So, um... Coach, yeah. this has been an eye-opening episode. Great. I, I know it's pretty late. We've gone over two hours, but I've been enjoying our talks, and I think they're pretty pretty productive. Can we can we go with three things? Sure. Um, First one is, what do you think would be the episode we'll be tackling if, uh, next? Second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna just kind of just uh, do the re, just uh, see what I've absorbed, kind of do like the rundown, okay. which we always do, which I think is very beneficial. And third, there's one question I want to ask you that chat asked you, which they said, why don't you watch pro games? And I do have an answer, and I wanted to get your opinion of that because I think that's also a beneficial answer for chat. Okay. Um. So first, first and so foremost, we'll what's next? Yeah, what's next um, for what should I focus on next? I really want you to focus on getting as much XP as you can as a support early. Like those times where you have that opportunity to TP somewhere, those times where you have that extra creep wave to clear. 
a lot of that's going to come after kills. So basically okay. the focus being after you get a kill or you make a move, right? You made that three-man attempt and you missed the kill. After yeah. you do something as a group, that next, like, 15 seconds is always some of the most important time in games. Like, what you make use of to dispersing. Like, are you clearing waves? Are you taking a tower? Being very crisp and very quick about all of that is very important. So I think so for making you, that's your next decisions step. after a kill. Yes, and practicing that skill it will be very important. Honing sometimes honing. you'll be like, oh, I should have been able to take that tower, but we were too slow. Next time, you know, next time I'll do that. This was such an eye-opening one. Okay, yeah. Coach, I'm going to run through everything. Okay. Um, and again, we, we went over two and a half. We were like two and a half now, so yeah. thank you so much. We, I really enjoyed the session. Um, I'm just going to run through what I've absorbed uh, based on everything. Uh, the basic one at lane, when you're winning the lane, there's a chance where you can either chill chill and reset um and uh if you can't take an objective if you don't have the mana or the ults to expend or let's say you don't even have the hp for that then don't take objectives and just chill and reset that's really important for your team mm -hmm. like chill and reset for me an option that i didn't know i had as a support was to actually i can actually go tp mid if my mid is doing very well and my core is doing very well I can go TP mid and soak HP. Actually, I can do that. Yeah. That that blew my mind, honestly, Coach B. That that blew my mind. And if my mid is doing well and my core is doing well in that game, I can even ask my mid, hey, maybe you want a jungle. I can soak up XP so we're stronger a little bit later. Yeah. Right? Okay, so those are options I didn't realize I had. Um it's always good to scale my Nova. I think that's that's uh important um how important scale yourself and what items how important just give me the killing heroes gives you the luxury of doing something you weren't able to do yep. initially absolutely and that's that gives you that advantage and that's really important what defines a late game hero is how hard they are to kill um, the later the game goes, be that tankiness, elusiveness, magic resistance, armor, magic burst, physical burst, these are all ballot pack factors. What gives them that advantage to make them harder to kill or maybe even kill you like crazy is the late game hero. Absolutely. Okay. And last but not the least, Roche just doubles that advantage. Yep. That's why it's so important. Yep. Exactly. Uh, I, it's good. funny because I've never actually thought about how important Roche is in that concept. Like, I know how important it is. I know what it does for you, but I've never actually verbalized it. So it's kind of funny. Um, okay. Awesome. And then you're, you had a question for chat about watching pro games and what was your answer? Yeah. Uh, someone asked someone in chat, and I thought it was a really interesting question. Just watch pro games and learn. But my answer to that uh, from someone in chat, um, I don't think I have the current understanding of the game to understand what a pro is doing at that level. So when and people... I think, go ahead. So I think the best thing for me to do is to understand these core concepts well enough at a high level so that I can take advantage of all the little things a pro, a pro is doing. So for me, that's my answer. To that. I think I'm not watching pro games right now. Um, I, I'm just trying to absorb these core concepts as well as I can and kind of just be able to make them instincts and be able to pull them off well. I think if I try to do a... If I watch a pro hero, I might not be able to... 100% grasp what they're doing and take advantage of what they're showing me. At the end of the day, when it comes to replays and playing, replays are, I know I need to learn something, such as a mechanic or a hero. I know exactly why I'm watching the replay, and I'm going to use whatever I see to benefit me. If that is not the description you have going into a replay, then what the hell are you doing? That's my answer. Like, if you don't know why you're watching that replay, if you don't know what you're benefiting from or learning from, there's just no reason. Um... So my goal in Dota is that everyone who's playing has a thing that they're working on, they're focusing on. For you, you have plenty of those. And the only reason I ever watch replays is if I'm learning a new hero or a new concept got brought to my attention, and I'm like, I need to see how somebody else is applying this in their games. Because there's a lot of times where you can watch a game and you have absolutely no idea what you're watching. Like, you have no idea yes. what, why what they're doing is working. And then somebody points out to you a new mechanic, a new idea... And you're like, holy shit, I, I, I can make sense of everything I'm now watching. And yes. then you can learn from it.
But if you can't make sense of what you're watching, so for a lot of people, like if you're 1K, 2K, 3K, you're probably not going to learn that much from watching pro replays, other than maybe like copy pasting their item build. Okay, I, I agree, and that's why mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn these core concepts as best I can first before watching uh, pros from chat. So, Coach B, I gotta say we overextended like for 30, yep. actually 40 minutes. Um, I'm sorry, I know it's late there, but um, thank you so much. As no again, this was hugely, hugely um beneficial and i'm excited to kind of do this for this week and hope i'm sure we'll have a lot more things to talk about next absolutely week. i look forward to it good luck thank you so much man thank you so much i'll have that writer soundbite for you um l later in the week please do i appreciate it all right thank you guys thank you coach b take care bye